1977, Denver had to beat Pittsburgh to get to the Super Bowl. And they did it by pressurizing Bradshaw and with the hawk-like play of linebackers like Tommy Jackson. And they did it with offense, too, like Morton hitting Riley Odoms for a touchdown. So, Denver 34, Pittsburgh 21, but that was 77. Last year, Pittsburgh had to beat Denver if Pittsburgh was to get to the Super Bowl, and they did it with bone-crushing play, as you saw there, containing Norris Weiss, and again, as you see there, and they did it too with an offense that protected Bradshaw. Plenty of time, scramble a bit, but able to throw downfield for a score like this one to the brilliant John Stallworth. Touchdown. And so last year, it was Pittsburgh over Denver. The score, 33 to 10. Now tonight, these two rivals, top teams, top contenders, each dreaming of Super Bowl, meet again on Monday Night Football. 20 seconds to air, stand by all cameras. Ready. Stand by in videotape. Ready. Stand by slow-mo. Stand by to open your mics on the field. Stand by in graphics. Ready with your opening super. Ready. Stand by the announcers in the booth, please. And roll tape. Roll Three, two, one. Take tape. Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. The Denver Broncos against the Pittsburgh Steelers. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Dotson, who invites you to test drive the all-new, bold-new Dotson pickups for 1980. They'll pick you up like never before. And by the Miller Brewing Company, Brewers of Miller Highlight. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. Again, everyone, the noise is deafening. You can hear it for yourselves. The atmosphere in this town, which they now call Title Town, is festive. There is still the hangover from the brilliant World Series victory. The Bucks indeed went all the way. And now the reigning champions of the Super Bowl, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the mighty ones. They want them to go all the way, to get back to form. And they know that tonight is a critical night. All you have to do is look at the standings of the AFC Central and the AFC West. In the AFC Central, for example, the Pittsburgh Steelers, if they win tonight, are still in first place. They're in first place by a half game, but a loss would tie them with Houston, which lost yesterday, and Cleveland, which won yesterday. But the Denver Broncos have their own axe to grind. Look at the AFC West. San Diego, a newfound powerhouse in the NFL at 6-2, and two, coming off the route of Los Angeles yesterday. But if the Bronx can win tonight, they tie the charges. The Bronx do have a quarterback problem. I don't know of a man better qualified in the United States to discuss that, since one of the persons involved is a former friend and teammate than the old Dan DeRue, Don Meredith. Let me see if I can do it. You know, the thing that's kind of uh, interesting, I guess, when you look at the championship teams, the Super Bowl teams, almost always they go and say, what brung us here? And usually it's the defense. And I guess in Denver's case, that was true, too. But the quarterback at that time, when Denver went to the Super Bowl to play Dallas, was Craig Martin, an old teammate of mine. And actually, a very good he's a very good quarterback. Last year, there was some doubt about his move, maneuverability. Can he move back in that pocket? And he really couldn't move too well. But uh, they said, we got another guy that can, Norris Weiss. He's actually a defensive back, but, man, he can play quarterback. And sure enough, he could. Now, the early part of this season, this season Norris Weiss was their starting pitcher, and Craig Martin was the relief man. Norris is suffering from a knee injury, and last week, Craig led his teammate over a victory to Kansas City, threw over 200 yards, completed 17 balls, 
And it's been a very well guarded secret at who's going to start tonight. Norris Weiss or Craig Morton. Well, I want you to know that this reporter is telling you an inside tip. It looks like Craig Morton. I think they'd like to have Norris Weiss's uh, maneuverability, but Craig can throw the ball and it looks like he's going to be the quarterback. How about that one? Shake him up. <laughs> huh? What brung us here? You're I more country know. than you ever That's right. Well, you go to one, you dance with the one that brung you. That's it. <laughs> no problems with the quarterback spot for the Pittsburgh Steelers. They have Terry Bradshaw, but they're coming off a game against Cincinnati where they turned the ball over nine times. You'll never win a football game, and they did not. They lost 34 to 10. They'd like to regroup. The Steelers problem, like so many teams in the NFL, has been that of injuries. And let's take a look at the injuries that have occurred just at the offensive unit of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Expected back tonight, Lynn Swan. We are told that he'll come in perhaps in the second series. Some of these players are coming back. Defensively, they have also had their problems. We'll probably see Ron Johnson back at the left corner. There is some concern, and early we talked to Lynn Swan and asked him about that concern over the Steelers. Here's his answer. Well, I can say I think we're in good shape, and we just have to stick to basics now, what we're good at, and... Uh, uh, not worry too much about what the other teams do. John Wooden said once about his great basketball teams that we're so good that everyone knows exactly what we're going to do. It's just up to them to stop us. And I think our team is that strong. So it's the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Super Bowl champion Steelers against the Denver Broncos. And we'll be back with a kickoff right after this message. You capacity crowds recently. The Denver Broncos have won the toss. Matt Barr, the rookie from Penn State, will kick off and deep for the Denver Broncos is number 23, Chris Payne. He lines up at the five-yard line. Barr punches it and is deep and it drives Payne deep into the end zone. No, he'll stay there. Chris Barr, a sixth-round draft pick out of Penn State, showing a lot of potential. Puts it deep into the end zone, and that's where the Denver Broncos will begin their operation. At quarterback, it will be Craig Morton. We did not know until just before game time who it would be. Norris Weiss heard in the San Diego game a couple of weeks ago. They thought he might be able to go, and perhaps he can tonight, but we are seeing Craig Morton to begin with with Rob Lytle. Number 41, Jim Jensen. You had a look at the offensive line. It's a good offensive line, and they'll have to be tonight because the Steelers are fired up. They took their lumps from Cincinnati 34 to 10 a week ago. They were embarrassed by that loss. They'd like to get something going tonight. And here comes John Keyword. Turns the corner. He runs into Mel Blunt over on that right side. Jack Lambert, the middle linebacker, also slipped out there. There is the front four. Here might be a problem. Dennis Winston, number 53, is at the right side linebacker for the Steelers. Now, he's a middle linebacker and a good one as you look at the secondary. But the two regular Weak side linebackers, right side linebackers in most cases, will be Robin Cole and Lauren Taze. Both of them are hurt, so it's Dennis Winston who performs better in the middle. Larry Canada comes in as a setback for Denver, replacing Rob Lytle. Canada wearing number 35. It's second down and nine. The ball just over the 20-yard line. Morton back. Gets the protection, has the time, finds the receiver. And it's Lytle coming out of the backfield, gets up to the... 25, mark it at the 26, it'll be third down at about four, picked up there by Jack Ham, one of the genuine all pros heading for Canton, Ohio. There is little or no question. He makes it all look so easy the way he does it. He just flows around and he's always on, in on the play. Leads all active linebackers with interceptions, of course, but you know that stat, 28 of them. Except for one thing, the man is playing with pain tonight, as a number of these Steelers are. But as you've noted, they intend to get back to form. They were embarrassed a week ago. Third down four. Dwayne Woodruff comes in in the secondary for the Steelers, number 49. Morton. Throws deep. Bobby, don't go. And deep downfield, he, he got the ball. <laughs> That's the kind of pattern you like. You know, you throw it over there in a bunch, and they can't tell for sure who you're throwing it at. Haven Moses, I'll tell you, I'm not so sure he wasn't going for Raleigh Odoms. Looked like it to me, but maybe he wasn't. Watch it again, Don. It almost looks like the ball was tipped. Not quite. Probably just over. I thought it just kind of slipped up maybe off. Yep. No, I think he is throwing over there. Who knows? Anyway, Riley was right there. It's a first down for dinner. That's what we're going to talk about. At the 48-yard line, the Broncos with Craig Morton. He has the time thus far on his passing efforts. That will be the question mark. He's not the most agile of quarterbacks. Bob Lytle hits the middle, and he's pounded there by the middle of the line. Gary Dunn is in there with Joe Green, and, of course, always this man, number 58. I Interesting think... battle tonight between two of the league's finest linebackers. They, of course, are both deeply competitive. Jack Lambert. A little on the quiet side would be the Denver Broncos, Randy Gratishar, but if they're two better, you'd have a hard time finding them. 
Second down nine. The ball at the 49 yard line. Rob Lytle 41. John Keyworth 32. Setbacks. Haven Moses 25. Rick Upchurch number 80. Wide receivers. Upchurch of course with that blazing speed. A threat every time he touches the ball. Keyworth gets the call. Has a huge hole. Bulls ahead. He has a Denver Bronco first down inside the 40 at the 38 yard line. John Keyworth was in there tonight starting although he does play a great deal. He's in there for Jim Jensen who was hurt Friday in practice. He has a sore calf and let's look at the big opening. I think you can see this. He, he doesn't give Keyworth the ball until he's really deep in the secondary. So I would imagine a lot of those reads that the defenses are getting are pass reads. That was a very finesseful move by Keyworth. He didn't well, try to do much except run over him but there he was got another first down. Well he went right. You saw Bill Bryan leading the way ultimately but the Denver Broncos people will tell you forever about the year Claudie Miner has been having thus far. At the 38 yard line a Bronco first down. Play action by Craig Morton. Down he goes. No chance and he could have been the most agile of all quarterbacks and he could not have avoided Donnie Shell coming on the safety blitz. Extremely effective defensive play. Greg was had the play called a little play fake to this side. I don't think he ever saw Shell coming. That's good defensive scouting and defensive coaching to know what kind of formation let that safety come. Fred Miller, the Denver coach. The Steelers know that with Morton in there, having an immobile quarterback against them, the job is to get to him as they just did. Fred Miller knows the job is somehow to protect against the blitzes. And against the front four, the Iron Curtain. Second down, 18. The ball at the 46-yard line of the Steelers. Morton. Oh, and he just does get it off in the general direction of Riley Odoms, but he felt pressure. It was L.C. Greenwood and Jack Lambert on the blitz. Greenwood, 68. Lambert, 58. That time, Greenwood came from outside, rolled to the inside. Nobody picked him up. Morton had to hurry the pass, and... In an area where we could look for Craig to try to go tonight to Riley Odoms, a gifted receiver, working against Donnie Shell, the strong safety who's playing on a very sore knee. But you'll see them blitzing as you just did that time with Lambert, the time before with Shell all night. With Morton in third down, 18. That church left. Haven Moses right. Those the wide receivers for Denver. Morton, Odoms had the ball, dropped it as he looked around to see who was going to hit him. It would have been Donnie Shell, fourth down, out comes the punting unit. And keep in mind that blitz by Donnie Shell has moved Denver out of a potential field goal possibility. They will have to punt. Luke Prestridge comes in, a rookie seventh round draft pick from Baylor, and Theo Bell drops back, standing on his 10 yard line. He's in there really because. The Pittsburgh Steelers would like to have Jim Smith in there, but he is starting at wide receiver. Theo Bell takes it at the 14 and gets back out to the 20-yard line, and the Steelers will have their first possession. 43-yard kick by the rookie from Baylor. We'll be returning to Three Rivers Stadium in just a moment. The numbers on Terry Bradshaw. We know all about him. He is a tremendous athlete. He can do so many things. Brings the Steelers up. Their first possession. The ball just inside their own 20 yard line. Setbacks, Franco Harris, number 32. Hand off to Harris. He uses his 225 pounds. Bulls ahead for three, three and a half yards. It'll be second down and six. And there is the offensive unit. Starting at the other setback with Franco Harris, Sidney Thornton. Out on the right flank is Jim Smith. He has done a credible job while Lynn Swan has been recovering for the past three weeks with a pulled hamstring. Swanee should be back, perhaps on the second series. John Stallworth has become a really gifted receiver out on the left side. And you saw the offensive line. There are some problems. John Cole playing with a pinched nerve in his neck on the left side. Second down, six. And off Thornton, and you see the strength of this man who came up three years ago, and Chuck Noll said he's perhaps the best blocker I've ever seen, and he used that big power of his, 230 pounds. Bulls ahead. Picks up a couple. It'll be third down, a long two. The ball just inside the 28-yard line. John Kolb comes out on the left side. So he stays in. They bring in now their short yardage defense. It's a long two to be in that short yardage, yet the Steelers go into it. Greg 
Randy Grossman in motion. Quick toss. Franco Harris has Thornton out in front of it. First down and a bundle more. Look out. Oh, boy. Bill Thompson could save it. Bernard Jackson pulls down oh, Franco boy. Harris. Down at the 16-yard line. And the big man also can turn it on. On a third and short, he broke it. Now you see something of the fire in Franco Harris and all the Steelers as you look at it again from the end zone. And he was waiting on his blockers, Don. That's why Jackson caught him. They were really, realized he might have powered his way. Really, we're out there. Of course, you mentioned he does for this guy. We've talked about so many times how fast he is. But R. Jackson is one of the fastest guys on the uh, Denver team. Picked it up. That was a little short scoring situation where everything just broke open for him. Harris also wants to prove something to the mighty Steeler fans because they were writing him off just a few weeks ago. Over the hill, Lace. Over the hill, I see. Inside the 18, first and 10, Harris gets the call. Pecks along the line of scrimmage and gets it to the 15-yard line. They'll pick up a three, Larry Evans in there defensively. That's Chuck Noll. He was absolutely frenetic over the performance of the Steelers against the Bengals when they lost 34 to 10 last week. They went back into pads this week, back to basics. They had tough, rigorous workouts to get back to the champions that they have been. Nine fumbles. That's right. That's Nine what they had last they week. Had. That Change, is amazing. Changes for the Steelers. Rocky Blyer comes in. Franco Harris goes out. Lynn Swan comes in. Flanked out to the right now by Bradshaw. Stower to the left. Second down, seven, the ball at the 15-yard line. Play action. Fired intended there for Stallworth. He's in a wrestling match out there with Steve Foley. Ah, couldn't shake Foley loose. He'd had him six. Took was, a while to get some help over there. It was good coverage. It was a dangerous pass gift. was. He had to leave it in the air for a long time. Not bad coverage at all. The gain is down to the 11-yard line. Gain of four, where it'll be third down. Call it a long two. There's Stallworth. 31 receptions coming into tonight's game. That's the 32nd. 19-yard average. Leaves the entire NFL in yardage gain receiving. And when you have Stallworth in there and Swan in there, you can give a coach a very nervous stomach. Franco Harris comes back in. Third and two. Bradshaw. Lynn Swan touchdown Steelers. One reception. There he is. He's back where he belongs. The most resourceful, the best wide receiver in football. Afraid to play the games he missed because of the pulled hamstring, a most dangerous injury that can keep recurring. Dandy taken. Well, that was his first touchdown of the year. The ball is perfectly thrown. Again, that is not bad defensive coverage. And it's the only place I can think of that you can throw it to catch it. But Swanee does have that leaping ability. He had to go way up high. And, man, that was Louis Wright right there. And he's as good as you can get on the corner. So give them both credit. A well-executed offensive play. The Steelers go out front 7-zip. <laughs> converts the Steelers are out in front seven to nothing we'll be back in just a moment a big short yardage play by Franco Harris a catch by Lynn Swan of a Terry Bradshaw touchdown pass the Steelers are out in front seven to nothing Matt Barr to kick off Chris Payne is deep for the Denver Broncos Barr again connects hangs it high Payne at the two yard line and Payne almost busts it. He does out to the 30-yard line. Steve Corson made the stop there for the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's early gift, but the storyline of this game comes into focus. A fired-up Pittsburgh team determined to reestablish themselves for what their personnel potential is. The best there is at what they do. A Denver team without offense, desperately trying to hang in there and trying to muster some offense with an immobile quarterback. On first and ten, change defensively for the Steelers. J.T. Thomas is in at safety in place of Wagner as Otis Armstrong ties the left side, gets a yard, a yard and a half. There he is, still relatively newly married, concerned about his career openly. Had long visits with him during the World Series and then last night at an MS cocktail party honoring Frank. And he said, I'm so worried because the hamstring injury is so recurrent. 
That's why I've been staying out. But now I think I'm ready. And he sure proved it with that TD catch, Doc. Sure did. Less than a yard picked up there by Armstrong. So second down, we'll call it 10. Flag is down, Morton is down. Jack Ham on the blitz, and you're going to see it from the Steelers all night. The blitz for the against Craig Morton. I think it's no secret Craig is not an agile quarterback. He depends on good protection. He has a great arm, a tremendous arm, but he needs time. Again, a flag down. The referee tonight is Pat Haggerty. You know, one of the things that happens sometimes is like word of mouth. You start talking about how immobile somebody is, and then everybody starts believing it, even the Denver Bronco team themselves. Let's see what this call is. We have offside, number 64, defense. We knew that, didn't Steve we? Steve Furness moving offside. I can, second down and five. I can understand him being offside, Frank. He is as fierce a pass rusher as you'll want to find. And having lost his job to some degree to Dunn, he wants to make up for it in a hurry. Well, resting just over the 35-yard line, Otis Armstrong in motion for Denver. Martin fires, now and he hits right Haven there. Moses. Look out, look out. There you go. Put it up on the board. Haven there Moses you go. spins away. Ron Johnson had a chance to collect him at the 32. He did not. Denver's on the board. Good example of Frank's strength in his arm, as you just were talking about, Howard, because that ball was well thrown, almost 50 yards in the air, and he hit a small spot. Again, not too bad a defensive coverage. The key to me is, look how much time he's got to throw. And he zipped that one right in there. Really, he was bounced off. That's one of those things that happens. It was, he shouldn't have scored on it, but he did. He sure did. And the last pass he caught was against Ron Johnson. He had a big one last week. Caught eight. eight. No, that was Upchurch call. He caught four last week. David did. So here's Denver for you, hanging in there, quickly turning the tide. Jim Turner for the conversion. His 1,399th point of his career, looking for the 1,400 mark. And there's Haven Moses, his 18th reception thus far this year. A big one for Denver because it looked like Pittsburgh was really going to maul them. It doesn't look that way now. We'll be back. Denver answered a little over a minute. They came back to tie the score up at seven. 64-yard touchdown pass. Craig Morton to Haven Moses. Jim Turner will kick off. Larry Anderson not respecting the distance of Turner. But Turner does put it up high. This will be Anderson. And Turner gets it inside the five. Anderson slips but sprawls forward to the 20-yard line. Steelers will have their second possession. Chris Payne down there to make the stop. You just saw that graphic. Two plays, Denver bang touchdown. Just when it looked they could sack Morton all night. Look at the difference in the respective faces of the coaches. The pictures tell the story. But you don't often see Pittsburgh scored again against that White. I think the Denver will really have to capitalize on those kinds of moments. I don't know that they'll be able to sustain those long drives without a real good running game. And they haven't proven that so far. Thornton 38, Franco Harris 32. The setbacks, first and 10. Bradshaw, he has all the time he would ever want going for Stallworth. Overthrown, and Stallworth is back there, well covered by Steve Foley, 43 for Denver. I tell you, they talk about Louis Wright, and as a result, and Louis Wright, who's always played Lynn Swan very tough, by the way, but couldn't stop the touchdown throw to Lynn. They always talk about Louis Wright and throw away from him. But this kid Foley, as you look at him, twice you've seen him in one-on-one -on -one coverage, and twice you've seen him stride for stride with the would-be receiver. There he is. He's a big one, too. 6'2", 190-pounder. Same size, Louis Wright, defensively over the other corner for the Broncos. Along with Mel Blunt, some of the finest cornerbacks in the game performing tonight. Second down, 10. Jim Smith in motion. Inside handoff is Thornton. And Thornton pounds out close to the 25 and knocked back to about the 23 and they'll mark with the 24 where it'll be third down and six. Then Swan comes into the game offensively for the Steelers. Thornton has to be a great player, Don. After all, Blyer on the bench had that tremendous game against St. Louis and then the 70-yard touchdown run against Cleveland. I love to see that 70. He really he was like outrunning everybody, wasn't he? <laughs> he was picking them up and putting them down. When you got Thornton, though, back there, you got a 230-pound you got, got a right ball. along Franco that's 225. So you're going that big back situation. And 
Rocky's not quite that big. Three wide receivers. Smith, Swan, Stallworth. Third down six. Bradshaw, a lot of time. Swan again. Oh, drops the ball. He did. He went up. Bill Thompson was there, but Lynn had an opportunity. And that will bring up fourth down. I like to watch this athlete as much as anyone in sport. His verve, his daring, his courage. And look at that. The great resourcefulness. You won't see him drop two of those in a season. No, he had it up on his shoulder pad and couldn't quite hold on to it. You know, you won't find too many quarterbacks can throw the ball that far and wait for the guy to make a cut downfield. Bradshaw threw that thing really right on the line. He had all the time he would need. Greg Colquitt punches it. Rick Upchurch is deep, but he lets it bounce. And it's going to take a Pittsburgh bounce. Close to the 20 yard line. A 56 yard punt by Craig Colquitt. 7 7 and we'll be returning to Three River Stadium in a moment. First undefeated Houston battles undefeated Arkansas. Then headline regional action Florida State LSU and Washington UCLA. Check local listings Saturday. Three minutes and 59 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Action packed in case you've just joined us. Steelers striking suddenly. And Denver answering a little over a minute from the Pittsburgh Steeler touchdown is tied at seven. First and ten, Denver, the ball at their own 20-yard line. Morton with a quick roll. Puts it into his own, and Ron Johnson was shocked. <laughs> he turned around. He had it for a moment. He said, hey, man, I was open. You couldn't ask for a better pass to Johnson, could you? No, it, you couldn't. It hit him right on the numbers. He's trying to get in between. I think he's maybe expecting kind of a zone, but... Uh, he was going with him all the way. You see Donnie Shell coming over to cover that deep zone. Bad pass. If you're going to throw that pass, you've got to throw it so it's going to go out of bounds high enough. You can't risk the interception. John Johnson. Johnson, one of those injured Steelers returning tonight. He's yeah. been out for a couple of weeks. Let's be kind and say so far he's been rusty. Second down, 10. Rob Lytle, right side. A couple of yards. It'll be third down and eight. Hit by Lambert and L.C. Greenwood defensively for the Steelers. Long passing situation now for Morton. And the Steelers have been almost consistent in passing situations, shooting safeties or whatever. and is bobbled by Canada. Canada picks it up and he's tripped up inside his 10. He's down to the five-yard line. Joe Green was in there initially. Oh, boy. Once me and Joe had his arms around him, that was it. You see him, big number 75. Look at it again. Dan DeRue. Well, it's not a bad pitch. It just hits him right in a bad spot. Canada was looking for something besides the ball. And... Uh, he did pick it up. I've seen guys after they've done that, they just can't get a handle on it. He's down right there. Big Joe's got him, pushed him back in. But now that's a very uncomfortable position for the rookie from Baylor. Hunting now, Luke Prestridge. He's in his own end zone. Theo Bell is standing near midfield for Pittsburgh. Prestridge, not a good kick. Bell at his 41-yard line. <laughs> and out of bounds. Good move by Cattle to come down and get it. There's Red Miller, and he was asked earlier, we did, if it doesn't give a team a little bit of a lack of confidence if the quarterbacks have to alternate. Just the opposite. We think the uh, players will play for whomever is in the game, and we preach that to our players, and they respond. Now, we, uh, we don't have a Terry Bradshaw. If I did, I'd probably play him all the time. That's pretty candid. I mean, if is. I did, I would play him all the time. And Terry Bradshaw has a first and ten at the 39-yard line of the Denver Broncos. Hands off to Sidney Thornton, and Thornton bulls ahead. Inside the 35 to the 34-yard line, a gain of five. It was second and five. Reuben Carter defensively with Barney Chavis for Denver. This is an important series for the Steelers. Why? Because they were stunned by that Denver touchdown that tied it at 7-7, the swiftness with which it came. On their next series, they couldn't move the ball. Three downs and over. Now with field position like this, they got to move the ball. 
from that point of view. Lance Swan is in. He's flipped to the right. Stallworth goes out to the left. Second and five. Sidney Thornton. Oh. And Thornton popped there defensively. Randy Gratishar. You see a hit like that. You can pretty well. That's Swinson there moving in. They, I'll tell you, they've got linebackers. They really yeah. do. This kid is a free agent from California. We commented in an earlier Denver game, a Thursday night game, Dan DeRue, on the number of free agents on the Denver team. At the time, it was 15. It's just incredible what the way they've taken these unknowns, put them together, and turned out that swarming defense that's one of the best in football. Red Miller deserves the credit. Third and about a yard and a half. Short yardage. Offense to the Steelers. Thornton in motion. They go with the toss that got a big gainer for him the last time. Franco does not get the big gainer. Uh, close to the first down. I believe he has it. I think he got it. That was the same play they utilized earlier. And Franco broke it off big. Looks like he's through, doesn't it, Dandy? Over the hill, looks like to me. <laughs> yeah, man's over the hill. He's not big enough to play in this league. No speed. Ah, Franco really is a good one. I, I'm really impressed with on that particular play that time. They had really good coverage out in front from an offensive standpoint to block for him. But again, you're seeing good pursuit for the Denver linebackers. And you just saw the two quarterbacks that, by his own admission, Red Miller would trade for Bradshaw. Hmm. First and ten. The ball is at the 28-yard line. Bradshaw keeps it. Good play. Flips it out. Oh, Defensively, a beautiful job by Foley, the right halfback coming up. What a, what a game that kid's playing thus far. He really is. Stallworth will hear some noise about that block, I imagine, when they start looking at the films. Like, hey, what are you doing? You stand there, you're talking to him, chinning and chinning. Gain of about a yard. It'll be second down and nine. Seconds ticking away here in the first quarter, and I do not believe we'll see another play. Take a look at Foley. He plays off Stallworth, as Don mentioned there. A little chicken fight going on. And then all of a sudden he ducks under it and he makes the tackle. Holding that gain to one. It'll be second down and nine when we return. Right after this message. Chuck Noll has Terry Bradshaw and he uses him all the way. And right now, as we begin the second quarter, Bradshaw has a second down and nine. Ball inside the 27-yard line of the Denver Broncos. It's all tied up at seven. Lynn Swan is in the game, flanked out to the right top of your screen. Stalwart split to the left in the quick toss. He goes to Franco Harris. A good block by Thornton. And Harris inside the 25 to the 23. Upset there by Larry Evans. Defensively, he was playing for Tom Jackson. Jackson, who is an outstanding linebacker for Denver. He also bruised a calf or had a calf muscle injury on Friday in practice, so he's not in there. Look First at the stats. Couldn't be much more even. Only a minute's edge in possession time by Pittsburgh. Total the yardage, slight edge to Denver based upon the passing, including that one key play to Haven Moses, the long TD. Rocky Blyer comes in. He usually does in recent games in passing situations, third down and five. Bradshaw again with all the time you could want. Fires and must complete. This is Jim Smith. He's inside the five-yard line, first and goal. And when you put those three wide men in there, Stallworth, Smith, and Swan, it can be nothing but headaches unless you can pressure the quarterback, and Denver did not. But as we isolate Smith, the whole key was what Frank told you, the time Bradshaw had. Look at that. Bang. Again, you know, you, you, you can't ask the defensive back to get much closer than that, particularly with that, uh, that kind of pattern. He's coming back across the middle. Both the defensive backs were there about as quickly as they could be. And that is absolutely right. Plus, the ball was right on the old clothesline. It didn't waver at all. Smith has played the last couple of weeks for Swan. He has improved tremendously at five receptions last week. First and goal, Randy Grossman in motion. Franco Harris. <laughs> Swan lunges. He's got the touchdown. <laughs> I love it. Oh. Surge forward. They say he broke the plane with the ball. <laughs> well, well, he's all washed up. <laughs> Who was our driver, Howard, that said, I don't like the way he tippy toes? That's right. Uh, he Nello. didn't, he didn't Nello. see him do that last minute crawl and jump. Let's see, he looks, he's down right there. Frank and I had a driver from the airport named Nello who was filled with more knowledge ability than any man in the history of the game since Nello Falashi was an All-American at Santa Clara in the 30s. Yeah, that was a piece of work. That's <laughs> 
But the Steelers out in front once again, 14 to 7 over the Denver Broncos. And let's look at it again. Franco Harris looking for the opening. And then with that tremendous strength, all 225 pounds, puts the ball right on the goal line. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. No, it was St. Mary's, Frank, not Santa Clara. We'll be back in a moment. Bell football. Dan Bouts goes for his fourth straight 300 yard passing game as he leads the Chargers against the Raiders Thursday on ABC. Set at the top of the telecast, San Diego's a powerhouse. Indeed, they are. Dan Faust, their quarterback, by the way, can be the first quarterback to ever go four consecutive games with over 300 yards passing. San Diego and open Thursday night. Matt Barr pumps it. Deep is Chris Payne. And Chris Payne out to the 35, and a flag goes down. Here we go with the new kick rule where you have to block above the waist. In this case, it was clipping. That's right. They the blocked below the waist. Pat Haggerty. You see it again and again and again. I just want to say this. I sure look forward to seeing the charges because this team is really coming on. There he is. They have a receiver we saw last year, John Jefferson, who is absolutely unbelievable. He's of a cut with Wes Chandler of New Orleans, Wesley Walker of the Jets. They have a personal foul. Clipping. Number 5 on on the return. Now that's that's Thursday night in Oakland. The Oakland Raiders had been coming strongly and then in this league the way it's constructed these days anything can happen and so the Jets with Todd to Walker upset them. Jim Ryan guilty of clipping for Denver first and 10 the Broncos at their own 13 yard line Morton slips it out to Lytle running room and Lytle moves out to about the 19 yard line. Gain of about seven. Hit there by Jack Ham defensively. Good play. Got the yardage he wanted on first down. I think one of the things you're going to see is in more plays like that. They tried the first quarter to see if they could establish some sort of run. They, the only time they really had it, they had a kind of a big opening over on one side, picked up a big first down. The rest of them were two and three yard gains. That's a good alternative. Flip out to a Rob Lytle on the outside. Maybe he'll break that one on one tackle. And it's almost as good as having a good running game. Almost, I said. And always, with Craig Morton, keep somebody to slip it to if they come with the blitz. Second down and three. Ball at the 20-yard line. Otis Armstrong, 24. Jim Jensen, 30 setbacks. This is Armstrong. There it Armstrong is. has a first down out over the 25 to the 26. Dennis Winston defensively in there on the stop for the Steelers. Otis Armstrong. Paul Howard playing clearing back the, to those great thousand yard seasons he had. Paul Howard clearing the way for him and Red Miller's faced some criticism for using too many backs. Why not use Armstrong? Because he feels Armstrong is not in the shape he was when he used to gain the thousand yards. Very simple. And off is Keyworth in the big one. Goes out to the 30 yard line. Gain of four, second down and six. Miller Fields, his offensive line has done a well of a job this year, Don. You've talked to him. Particularly studded, Glassic, Ryan in the middle, Howard, and above all, Claudie Minor, whom they claim is having a sensational season. I think they're most effective blocks, too. They're all pretty good size, or the straight ahead blocks. And that's one of the things that I think if you're going to try to, get, try to give Pittsburgh some trouble, is just go right at them. Up church and Haven Moses. Boat split to the left. Second down, six. Otis Armstrong in motion. Armstrong. There you and go. Did he step out of bounds? Not until he picked up the first down out inside the 46-yard line. And the first down and then some. Now that's a clever use by Mello who calls the signals of Otis Armstrong. Running the backs back and forth is Canada. Jensen, Armstrong, shuffling the plays and to Morton. You saw Jensen come up, pass to play on to Morton. Broncos down, 14 to 7, 11:05 remaining in the first half. You throw that kind of pass, you can wind up with a better than 60 percent reception completion percentage, and that's why that kind of statistic doesn't mean a thing. <laughs> Otis Armstrong runs into the Steelers' defensive unit. L.C. <laughs> Greenwood on the bottom, Jack Ham on the top. Armstrong lowers his head, gets a yard out of it. Just telling it like it is. <laughs> well. It'll be second down and nine. 
it means that you've hit 60 out of 100. Is what That's that right. Means. Yeah, and you can keep throwing those little hitches all day long and complete. An average yard per pass is always a very good measure, I think. It's along good, with those percentages. It's a good measure of a receiver, too. Yeah. Look at a guy like Wesley Walker. He has the most amazing average yard completion. Ball at the 47 yard line of the Broncos. Martin. <laughs> Riley <laughs> Adams. I love it. He did a good job that time, though, because he read the blitz real well, had Riley Odoms out on a kind of a safety valve pattern, had Haven Moses coming down across the middle for an old. Uh, Standard sort of that's how we beat the blitz. Let's throw a guy toward the post and have the tight end go to the outside. He just raised up, hit Riley Odoms. That's a blitz real well. It might be a standard, but it's very effective. And as you said, Don Red, if they keep coming with it and they keep picking it up and he reads it, I don't mean I would effective. throw it, Frank. I mean it's a deceiving statistic. You throw it to a guy like Riley Odoms, it's like throwing it to Otis Dell or Russ Francis. One time they'll break the tackle and may go all the way. Third that's and one. Rob Lytle. I don't believe he got it. It'll be very close. I don't know, Frank. It's always a difficult decision when you've got that third and a long one, and that's basically what that one was. When you try to lead with that fullback to get somebody in there, or whether you just try to hand it off straight, get something right down the middle. It's also a good time to give that old, let's fake that thing, and let's try to go ahead and hit a little one of those quick passes we've been talking about. That's right. First they down indicated. Rob Lytle picking it up inside the 45-yard line. Up church, but out to the left. In the slot. Top of your screen, Haven Moses. Moses in motion. He's going to go. looking for the screen, and it was Jack Lambert who slithered out there, reading the screen all the way. Morton had to throw it away. Man, he had a lot of them reading that screen, and most of them were wearing black jerseys. There were four <laughs> of them out there. He had Winston, Lambert, and Ham was even over there. Now they all three get over there. Man, those guys are swift. Swift, swift. Curly, it's all right, son. Just to ease in there now and be okay. Second down. If it is, you've got news for him. That's what he said. <laughs> he said, you've got a scoop. Zach Valentine in defensively for the Steelers. And out comes one of the down linemen. See Furness coming out. Left church, split to the left. Moses the right. Steelers thinking pass. And they're coming. Craig going for Riley Odoms overthrows and Donnie Shell was with Riley Odoms. David Moses was by himself down the middle. So Red Miller has a lot to think about on this call. I just think your odds are so much against you when you're working well particularly when you work against an experienced team like Pittsburgh you try to burn them with those real deep passes that are really a little more than just take off and let's use our speed and get behind them. These particular cornerbacks have speed themselves. This game more than usual a game of chess as Pittsburgh keeps changing their defensive personnel. Third down. Craig has the time and fires into a crowd intended there for Haven Moses, and he was really popped. He was. By Donnie Shell. He was, but that was catchable. I think it was Lambert that got him too, Frank, and I think he saw Lambert in there. You can't fault the guy, really, except he is paid to catch the ball. The ball was thrown well in a very kind of a crowded situation. You'll see Lambert, the middle linebacker. I'm sorry, that ball should have been caught. You bet it is, but you saw that elbow come real close to the head. That's uh, you, It's hard to find those receivers who can go over the middle and catch those things all the time. Believe me. It's dangerous, yes, but as you said, they're paid to catch them. Luke Prestridge will punt for Denver. Theo Bell at the 10-yard line. Prestridge angling for the sidelines. We watched him during practice. He's pretty good at it. He's not bad. <laughs> this one will not be too bad. They'll step it off and they'll mark it inside the 15 yard line at the 13. We'll be back in a moment. Frank Gifford along with Howard Cosell and Don Meredith. Three River Stadium. That's the offense thus far. Score 14 to 7. The Steelers over the Broncos. The Steelers have a first and 10 at their own 13 yard line. Bradshaw is back. Screen. It goes out to Franco Harris. <laughs> 
and he makes it look awfully easy as Harris moves out close to the 18 yard line up into there by Larry Evans. Gain of six it'll be second and four. You look at the Steelers you wonder how they ever lost 34 to 10 to the Bengals. They can do so many things. Stop shaking your head Franco. We know you think you should have gotten more yardage on it but this Denver team has great defense. They swarm. They hit. They hit one on one. A troubled or perhaps not so troubled at this moment Chuck Noll. But they can kill you these Steelers in so many ways. Swan is in number 88 flanked to the right by Bradshaw. Oh, he's Wide gone. open is Swan. <laughs> oh, he may be able to turn it on. It's going to be Bernard Jackson again that pulls. Lance Swan, who has been out, by the way, with a hamstring, pulled for a couple of weeks. He, of course, was a great track man at USC, and you thought he could pull away, but Bernard Jackson saves the touchdown at the 16. And the only reason, in truth, he did was that Lynn is still favoring that pulled hamstring. Well, I hope we have a couple of angles of this because I saw something going and Lynn really moved around. You're probably right. He's probably not running uh, on uh, on a full 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 leg. Louis Wright, right there, came up to try to bump Lynn. Lynn made a quick move, went around him. Again, Bradshaw was reading it all the way. Lynn had a couple of steps on him, and Louis Wright was there. We're back now, live. Frank, I'm on sorry. first and ten at the 16, a 65-yard pickup. That's Stallworth, and Stallworth has the ball at the 11-yard line. A gain of five. It'll be second down and five. I tell you, they have so many weapons, you sometimes wonder what the key is to stopping this Pittsburgh team. I, I think one of the things that Louis Wright's trying to do, and I'm not trying to, it's one of the, if you're trying to read Lance Swan, everybody knows he's got good speed, good catching ability, leaping ability. They try to intimidate him. They try to come up and hit him at the line of scrimmage. Louis Wright just missed. He tried to come up and hit him. Didn't do it. Two big plays where Swan beat Louis Wright tonight, who has always matched him. Toughest man in the league for Lynn Swan, but not tonight. Not Copy so a screen far. again as Swan matched up with Louis Wright. Second and five. Bradshaw. Franco Harris. Harris inside the five. He has a first down Steelers. Well, he's only called four different. He's only called uh, three different plays. That's the same pass he called uh, earlier, the first play. And nobody covered him that time, so he called it again, and nobody covered him this time either. You saw Steve Foley and John Stallworth. Yeah, they were a having little, a little tussle, weren't they? Chicken fighting there. <laughs> Is that what you call it? No, pecking away. Uh huh. I don't want to peck with either. No, sir. You're a nonviolent man. That's what I like about That's it. That's right. Easy going. Except with sports right Mild mannered sort of fellow that steps in and out of phone booths every now and then. Uh huh. <laughs> First and goal. Short yardage offense for the Steelers. Grossman in motion. The toss goes to Harris. Thornton okay. is out in front of it. Harris is in. Good uh, night. They got it rolling tonight. Steelers using all of their weapons in that drive. Their principal offensive weapons, Swan and Franco Harris. And a fellow named Bradshaw. Franco Harris, just knowing where he is on the field at all times, steps into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh, and Matt Barr comes on for the conversion. Through, and it's good. And the Steelers have extended their lead over the Broncos 21 to 7. Don't go away. A lot more offense coming your way. 21 to 7, the Steelers over the Broncos. Set to kick off. Matt Barr, deep Chris Payne for Denver. And Barr got way under that, hit the kicking tee. He's taken at the 24 yard line. Taken there by Kip Lathrop. Lathrop gets it to the 30-yard uh, line. Actually, that was Canada who brought it back. So now the Denver problem, Frank. Do they have the offense with Greg Morton at quarterback to cope with Pittsburgh's defense? Get back in the game. Two touchdowns behind. Big problem. They're not a high-scoring team. They beat Kansas City with 24. They lost to Seattle. They scored 34 in that one, but they did lose. They beat Oakland 27 to three. Those. Their high scoring performances thus far in the season. First and ten, Morton remains the quarterback. Play action.
action fake. Morton has the time. Lofts it up in the general direction of Haven Moses. Donnie Shell was back there flagging it. Well, it was a tough throw for Craig oh, under any circumstances. Oh, Don, you saw him stumble as he was dropping back. Oh, Looked like he flagged over down. somebody. Flag is down as we look once again. Yep, he tripped over, tripped over his own old offensive guard there that time. That was Paul Howard. The ball was just really thrown deep again. You know, I think to get back in any ball game, you've got to rig, kind of work the ball down. You can't count on hitting the ball uh, a pass like you did to Haven Moses, and everybody bounced off That's of it. That's right. Go 60, 70 well, yards. defensing that, clearly you saw Donnie Shell back there. He covered him like a blanket. And the key Listen receiver. In Number 70. Number 7. Dave Stutter, the left offensive tackle of the Broncos. Seven. Key receiver in a situation like this might be Rick Upchurch, Frank. Throw it to him short and let him run. Try to get it to him. First and 20. Rick Upchurch has not caught the ball tonight. He's a game breaker if they can get it to him. Well, Dublin in. Odoms is open over the middle. There you go. Riley Odoms there inside Steeler territory at the 48 yard line. And that is concentration because. Odoms knew he was going to get hit, as he did indeed by Donnie Shell. His only thought was reading the label on the ball. Squiggle straight back pass. They doubled Rick Upchurch. Beautifully thrown ball, right, hitting him right in the numbers. That's not the easiest pass to throw because the guy's going right straight in front of the quarterback. If he goes to the outside, you got a bit better angle, but that, that was a good throw. That's true. And in a sense, Upchurch was the key because they had a double. They sure did. On first down, the ball at the 48 yard line of the Steelers. Change of setbacks. Otis Armstrong is in. John Keyworth. Martin had his arm hit, I believe, or he decided not to go to Upchurch. Pulled it down. Put a butterfly over the middle. Incomplete. He who hesitates is lost. Written about somebody. Looked like he pulled the string on it, Don. He I think he was trying to pull Upchurch, it down, too, Frank. Upchurch sprinting down the sidelines. Thought that's not going to work. And pulled the string and dumped it over the middle. They had a kind of a delayed double coverage that time. They are going to. I mean, that's a. Smart thing to do defensively. I saw a lot of defensive change when Bobby Hayes came into the business because they got to respect the guy's speed, a real game breaker. Ball number 22. Oh, you bet. But you can go to somebody else there. That's what that whole thing's about. Second down, 10. Upchurch put left this time. Moses, bottom of your screen. Wide receivers for Denver. Uh, could have been. Joe Green is acting for the Steelers like somebody pulled him off. indicated against Denver. Now you can use it. Might have been Paul Howard. He was playing directly across from Joe Green. He would be the right guard. There he is. <laughs> Paul Howard, though, back it up five yards. He's looking older. In that league, I can understand it. Now you can use Upchurch. Swan with a happy face. Ball at the 47 yard line following that penalty of the Denver Broncos. Single setback, Keyworth. Here comes the blitz. Go. And down goes Morton. It's uh, Joe Green. They're all in there, but Joe in them first. LC was in there. I don't think I'd ever call a pass play tonight if I didn't have a safety valve. He didn't have any that time. He had all his receivers deep. You see the way they were dealing, though. Joe Green not coming over Paul Howard, but moving behind his right tackle, sliding along, and it takes precision effort by that offensive line to pick that up. That, too, Frank, is something that's basically illegal, but they you know, everybody kind of does it. They go in, and they'll grab one of those offensive guards or centers and kind of hold him there in position, and it appears that, man, they're really struggling to get away from that block. In reality, what they're doing, they're holding him so the other guy can go around the outside. Third down, 23. The ball inside the 40-yard line, and Denver is not going to put it up in the air. Rob Lytle is pounded on the right side of the line of scrimmage, and Denver will have to punt. That's exciting. Yeah, great play. I'd like to talk to Red Miller about that call. Well, they were in a tough situation. You're talking about a 
third and long, but by golly, you know, how many times are you going to pick up 15, 16 yards on a play like that? It was third, 23. <laughs> well, you do it when you're having skeleton drills, but nobody tackles <laughs> in practice back in training camp. Theo Bell at his 20-yard line. Prestige drops the ball, but there is no rush. The Steelers playing for the return. They did not even have a single man on the rush. Theo Bell is down at the 22-yard line. Got to have somebody look like me. That's a, uh, our illustrious producer, Dennis Lewin, made a good point. Should there somebody be downfield, and there is a flag, and I would imagine that's what it's for. And we have 350 left in the half. Plenty of time for Pittsburgh if they can get field position. Another wonderful opportunity to run a sweep. An eligible man downfield. And that will bring it back once again. There's he bobbled the ball, but there's not one stealer. And this is unusual because even if you're going with the return, you always send one man to keep the punter honest. That's true, Frank. Thank you. Well, it is. <laughs> Frank doesn't lie. No, Frank, Frank speaks. He speaks not with forked tongue. <laughs> Pittsburgh, their option was the ball up to 22 or make Denver kick it over. They'll have Denver kick it over. Still ready. Number Shakespeare. Eight, eh? man downfield, number 58 offense. Bob Nairn down there early. Denver. I think he was one of several. Jim Smith is in there now at the 32 to run this punt back at Prestridge, and that was a high center. Prestridge had a tough time with that one, and Smith calls for, makes the fair catch at the 24-yard line. And he did right. Well, the Steelers pick up a couple of yards by taking that penalty. That is interesting. That's the first fair catch, I believe, that Smith has made, what, 63 catches? 63, that's right. He does not like to fair catch it, and it's a good thing he did because he would have really been pounded. Hustling down there was Chris Payne for Denver. With a 21-7 lead, still in the first half, it would be a mistake to risk a turnover. Son got in his eyes. Franco Harris, single setback. The Steelers out in front of the Broncos, 21-7. Steelers can maintain a game over Houston and Cleveland in their division with the win tonight. Wide open is Grossman. Oh, boy. Randy Grossman inside the 25, and he was really open. I want to tell you something about that kid. He's not Benny Cunningham. He knows it, but he's a man of talent. Look at it from the end zone, Don Taco. I want to, this is running to the left, and Terry did a heck of a job of controlling it. Look at that ball. Again, it is thrown right on the money. You were right. Grossman got wide open. I don't know how he did that. But, man, that was a good throw. He's a master of the art. He proved it last year. That's a kid who knows his place in pro football, how to get the most out of himself, how the team can get the most out of him. First and 10 at the 22-yard line, Franco Harris. Sprints to the outside, and this time he cannot get away from John Grant. Good play by Grant. One-on-one -on -one tackle. You see the time rolling down. But the steel is in great field position now. Franco got a yard out of it. It'll be second down and nine. Pittsburgh, of course, got on the scoreboard early. Pass from Bradshaw to Lynn Swan. Seven to nothing. Haven Moses then with 64 yards on a Craig Morton pass to tie it up. Frank O'Hara scored for Pittsburgh in the second quarter. And again, it was Harris to make it 21 to 7. Second down nine. Lynn Swan in motion. Bradshaw puts it in a group. And it's incomplete. Sidney Thornton was down deep. Joe Rizzo back there defensively for Denver. Not a well-conceived situation. Looking left toward Swan, who was the man in motion. Then Turning right, throwing into a crowd. Okay, if you don't throw into the crowd. Don't risk a turnover now. You got field goal position. Right, Dan DeRue? Well, he was definitely trying to throw it to Swan, who you saw come back out to the outside. I think what Terry did, he, they, they had a good defense, a stronger defense on that side than he had expected. He did come back. Of course, you're always trying to avoid those turnovers. Those are things we talk about all the time. On the third down, long yardage. In comes the... Reception unit, if you will, for the Steelers. That means Rocky Blyer's in there. Three wide receivers. Bradshaw has Smith wide open. First down inside the two. They'll mark it at the one. 
They're all over Swanee. And that left Smith with one-on-one -on -one coverage. It's a beautiful thing to see. Now the two-minute warning, Frank. It was Bill Thompson competing with Jim Smith. Thompson lost first and goal for the Steelers at the two-minute warning. We'll be back. Barry wants the crowd to quiet. Hand off Franco Harris, and this time he slips and goes down right at the line of scrimmage. Almost gave up the football. He stumbled some way back in that backfield. Nobody hit him. This fell. He knows it, too. He says, oh, what is this? Goodness, goodness, goodness. After last week, he'll be squeezing that football. He will. <laughs> Never a fumbler. Franco Harris had his problems last week against Cincinnati. The Thank entire team did. Terry really is sharp tonight, isn't he? Oh, he I is. saw him in the final game of last season when he played just a half against the Broncos. And when he is on, he is it's tough. almost unbelievable. Second and goal. Sidney Thornton. <laughs> and hey. Thornton turned to well, they give it to him. They say oh, he man. The goal line. That was a good defensive play. Good defensive play. Randy Grashar was one of the guys. Jackson, you see, is very upset. Frank. Rizzo. Rizzo was in there. Take a look at it again from overhead. Franco Harris into the middle. Here's Sidney Thornton. Hit there by Gratishar. Bill Thompson. Good lead block by Sam Davis, who kind of got knocked off by one of his old men, but still got in there. Headlines went right at the line of scrimmage. He indicates touchdown. Matt Barr's on for the conversion. Matt Barr, very busy here in the first half from the Steelers. And they moved out 28 to 7 over the Broncos. Very distinguished visitor in our booth. booth. And he's going to have a little chat with Howard. No, I, I heard it was good. Okay, we have the good fortune of having one of the great little men of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Little in size only, so big in stature. 12 hits in the series. Phil Garner. Phil, again, belated congratulations for a most remarkable performance. Thank you very much, Howard. And thanks for mentioning the hits instead of the one bad play I had in the series. That was in the first inning of the first game, and your hands were cold. Well, we we, we all make mistakes, but the one thing we fought back, we played good after that, and uh, took, it took a lot of coming back to do. And you distinguished yourself and this city as the people you are with great character and grace. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, let's watch the game. The Steel is a mighty tonight. Frank? Matt Barr hits it. Chris Payne awaits at the five-yard line. Payne has a little bit of an opening and he exploits it out to the 30-yard line, make it the 31, hit there by Theo Bell. And Denver will try to get something moving. They have been watching the Steelers move the ball back and forth. That's the scoring drive. Steelers using 221. Bradshaw mixing up his receivers. Lynn Swan, Grossman. Smith. I got to quickly tell you before the play what Phil Garner just said. He said, This is more exciting than the series for me. <laughs> it's the kind of guys the Bucks have. Great people. Uh, it's because the series is over and they won. That's right. First down, Denver. Jensen gets the call, and Denver apparently feels like they'd like to settle it down a little bit. A gain of four by the former Cowboy that came in 77. Missed last year with knee surgery. Hurry up offense by the Broncos on second down six. Martin fires and it's incomplete. That was almost intercepted after it should have been completed. That's Upchurch out there in the flat. Had the first down and should have held on to it. And he knows it. He was all alone when they break at the end of this. That's Winston there trying to cover. Just left out to the outside. There's nobody really around. Craig had a little trouble in seeing it. He must have. <laughs> oh, it's always tough. He might have. Uh, well, at the very beginning, I was mentioning the fact that if we look at Rip, Rick Upchurch, the one problem Steelers really have now is that right side linebacker. Dennis Winston's a good middle linebacker. Got him out on the right side, and he really gets a little bit lost out there. Third down and six. Upchurch left. Goes his right. Morton. That's the fire over the on-rushing Steelers intended for John Keyworth incomplete. Wayne Woodruff defensively against Keyworth, but it was again the Steeler rush that forced to Morton's hand. And a lot they look tough tonight. 46 seconds remaining in the first half. And Luke Prestridge comes out. Theo Bell drops for the Steelers. Bell. 
about his 28 yard line. And the rookie from Baylor gets off a good boot. Theo Bell at the 23 yard line. There is Randy Grossman. Earlier you saw him make the key catch that set up the fourth Pittsburgh touchdown. He knows who he is, where he's at. I asked him if Cunningham has more talent than he. I don't think there's any question in my mind or uh, his mind or anybody's mind that uh, on, on raw ability, Benny is just uh, head and shoulders above me. But I think the important thing is that uh, in football, as in everything else, uh, it's a total package that makes up uh, a football player. And I think I compensate in different ways so that I you know, can get the job done also. Indeed he did. Remember a year ago, Howard against Houston? Oh, yes. Nine receptions by Randy Ghostman right here. But as I said, that's a kid who knows who he is, where he's at, what is all about, what his place is on this team that's part of what makes the Steelers mighty. Denver had an ineligible man downfield on the punt. That was declined. The Steelers had the football. That's what they want at their own 23. Rocky Blyer gets the call, moves to the outside. Blyer. Rips off four or five yards. It'll be second down and five. Pittsburgh with three timeouts. Denver also with three. Road to the Roses. Past Athena. That's <laughs> where they want to go. Nine of 12 is Terry Bradshaw for 190 yards and a touchdown. They got that work cut out for them. There's New England laden with personnel. And Pittsburgh is going to let the time run out here in the first half. Pittsburgh over the Denver Broncos, 28 to 7. Stay with us. We'll be coming right back to Three River Stadium. The way it was in Market Square in Pittsburgh last Friday at 12 noon in celebration of the fact that the Bucks had become the champions of the baseball world. That's Mrs. Omar Moreno. You've seen her before. Sister Sledges, we are family in the background. And above all, they are celebrating the head of the family. That man, the senior citizen, Willie Stodgen. That was in the top of the sixth against the brilliant young Scott McGregor with a man on in the seventh game, providing the game-winning runs. Stodgel had done it. He is Mr. Pittsburgh. Earlier tonight, I spoke with him. And here he is, the head of the family, Willie Stodgel, who somehow has touched the soul of a city. Willie, belated congratulations to you. And secondly, what has been your retrospective feeling, if any, about all that's happened? Well, Howard, thank you for the congratulatory. And uh, I'm very warm and filled with a lot of emotions. But it hasn't really hit me yet. I was saying a moment ago that basically I do get an idea of what we've done in terms of how the people are responding as we walk about the city. But I guess I'm sort of tired and I'm unwinding. And once this has taken place, then I'll be able to look at tapes, videotapes, and, and see the excitement and probably get goosebumps and, and say, no, I wasn't part of that. But it was a thrill and something uh, that I'm very proud of. One thing I think all of you should be proud of, Willie, is that the public has met you all now as people, the birds as well as the bucks. And every one of you, I think, cloaked yourself with dignity, with character, and with grace. Do you have such a feeling? Yes, I do. Uh, we were flying back on the plane from Baltimore. And collectively, most of the guys was talking about, you know, what tremendous athletes that we performed against. And we're talking about the Baltimore Orioles. And we were just so proud to run up against such character in their athletes and they reminded us so much of our ball club because we we're so proud of each and one of our individuals and as a result you could see that in the Baltimore Orioles. It's unfortunate that it has to come as one team winning and one team losing but I don't call them losers. I just figure that we scored more runs than they did. Well Lee, thank you very much for visiting with us. It's the city of champions now. It's title town USA. And you're the leader. Where else can you go in the world and find a city with Super Bowl and world champions? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, old friend. Thank you, Howard, and everybody in America. Willie Stargell, a touch of class. And could you believe that Don Meredith tried to steal his hat? <laughs> That's that is true. a heck of a hat. Now, I <laughs> like that hat. He told me he got it down in Texas. Turner hits it for the Broncos. Deep is Larry Anderson at the five-yard line for the Steelers. Comfortably out in front. Anderson 
upended as he moves out with the 15 close to the 18 yard line. We anticipate again Bradshaw at quarterback Franco Harris Rocky Blyer perhaps and Sidney Thornton alternating. It'll be Sidney Thornton number 38 in there with number 32 Franco Harris the wide receivers Stallworth 82 Jim Smith 86 the tight end is Randy Grossman Benny Cunningham not been in action tonight he was shaken up against Cincinnati last week he has had reoccurring headaches they said he was able to play we have not seen him thus far tonight Bradshaw has been using them all handoff goes to Thornton and Thornton out over the 20 to the 22 yard line Frank, I doubt with this kind of lead that Chuck will go to Cunningham tonight. He'll want to protect him. But what do you do, Don, when you're 21 behind against the Steelers? Well, you, you can, pray. No, you, you don't know. No, I wouldn't really go that far. I think what I would do is I'd say, let's hold them, guys. Let's hold them, hold them, hold them, hold them, and score, 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 and win, win, win. They better pray for some turnovers. One of those nine fumbles or something showed up from last week. Maybe it was a carryover. Thornton got four. It'll be second down and six. All out of the 22-yard line. Bradshaw. But he's got one so wide open. Now he threw it the wrong way. Right for Stallworth, and there was a collision with Bernard Jackson, and a flag is down. Bernard Jackson stepped in front of Stallworth. Well, if that's defensive interference, I'm not saying. The lights are out earlier than I ever have. Disregard the flag. Good. Should not have been caught. All right. Thank you. Well, that's very, very honest. Disregard the flag. Yeah. Flag should not have been thrown. Absolutely. Well, the crowd's not too happy with Bernard Jackson, by the way, is limping off. Now, he has a pretty violent collision with John Stallworth, and he has limped off the field. There it is. Well, you can see he came down really at, at Stallworth, had his legs wrapped around his, and it looked like it did turn that ankle pretty good. Charlie West comes in defensively for Bernard Jackson. West wears number 40. Had a few years up in Minnesota, a few more at Detroit. Came to Denver only a year ago. It's third down now, and six, Lynn Swan comes in, number 88. The official reason, the ball way overthrown. It was not the action between Bernard Jackson downfield was not involved in the play flag is down again this is Franco Harris and that's the same play that they've run three times in a row you were thinking there's one thing they're going to cover at halftime it would be that little flare out to Franco again a flag is down at the line of scrimmage Harris up to the 35 yardage enough for the okay. first down and the offsides being indicated against Denver declined Franco Harris not having a bad night at all looking for his Seventh 1,000 yard rushing season. He's had six of them in his career. First down. That would match Jim Brown. He's got a whole lot of things ahead of him. He needs a little over 600 yards this year to become the fourth leading rusher of all time, passing Joe Perry. He could also move into third behind Jim Taylor with a super year. First down. Ball up the 36 yard line. Franco Harris. Ooh. Out over the 40, just moving along, oh. gliding through there. He really busts in that. Oh, he that done? They're playing. The Steelers are playing really as well as I've seen them play in a long. I don't think I've ever seen them play that this well anytime, as a matter of fact. But particularly on offense, they are really clicking on offense. They've got it going. Franco's having a good night. Terry's really sharp, and I like to see Thornton in there. Thornton adds another dimension that that maybe uh, Rocky doesn't. Harris gets six, the second down and four, the ball at the 42 yard line. Well, Thornton bobbles the ball. It's one of the dimensions I was talking about. Denver comes up with it. It's Latimer who has the ball. Don Latimer comes up with the ball, and this is the turnover that Denver, as you mentioned, was looking for, Don. Exactly what Don suggested. Denver has to play its game and hope for turnovers. That was Thornton that fumbled that. Looked like he never really got a handle on it. He never did have possession of the football. Latimer, a second-year man, comes up with it, and we'll be returning to Three Rivers Stadium right after this. Isn't it a beauty? A Datsun 280ZX. And it's all mine. Ours. 
am I glad we priced a Z before we settled for something else? Price a Datsun 280ZX. Don't let that styling, that luxury, that performance mislead you. You could get an EPA-estimated city range of 400 miles and highway range of over 600 on one tank of gas. Price a Datsun 280ZX. It costs less than you think. And gives us more. Here's to good friends. The key's supposed to be under the steps. I got it. Hey, here's a note. Gentlemen, my country estate is at your disposal. <laughs> there might even be a little something in the refrigerator regards hand. Let it be low and brown. Low and brown. Oh. When you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be low and brown. Here's the Hank. <laughs> Wherever he is. Low and brown. <laughs> Morton down 28 to 7 gets the first turnover Denver has the football at the 38 yard line of the Steelers Upchurch and Moses the wide receivers the setbacks are Lytle 41 Jensen number 30 the tight end is Riley Odoms Lytle in motion and the toss goes to Jensen flag is down and Jensen is down after maybe a gain of a yard Threw a flag at Riley Odoms, Frank. Looked like he uh, clipped Jack Ham. I think you're right. But while we have this instant, Frank, there's something I must say for all of us. There's a lady I dearly love in the Merritt Hospital in Oakland, California. Her name is Carol, or Caroli, as you will, Davis, the wife of Al Davis. I spoke with Al yesterday. No game matters, not against what's happened. At age 45, struck down, will get this call of the official. Struck down by a severe coroner. Unbelievable. Out of her coma now, but gravely, gravely ill. And all of us in this booth pray for her because we love her. Move back to the 47-yard line, clipping against Riley Odom. First and 25. Morton hangs it up. Odom's is open. Oh. He does not hold on. Beautifully thrown. Donnie Shell collided with Odom's. The ball came loose. Give Shell all the credit in the world. The ball was well thrown, Frank. Good pattern by Odom's. He had it. Donnie Shell just broke it up. That's it. Seems Odom's is holding his left arm. Stays on the sidelines. Looked like Rob Lytle picked a man that I wouldn't have chosen over there to have some words with. I think it was Jack Lambert. We saw him slightly restrained by the officials on the sideline. Frank, just two weeks ago tonight, the night before that, you had dinner with Carol Davis. Did so. you? She's a lovely lady, and as you so well put it, we all wish her very best. Yeah, I sat right by her. She certainly is, and I'm looking forward to seeing Al and all the Oakland Raiders on Thursday when they play San Diego to get out there. Second down, 25 for the Broncos. Gray gets out of trouble and makes a completion down inside the 35 to the 31-yard line. Haven Moses, short of the first down, hit there by Dwayne Woodruff. Now, right there, you saw Craig Morton holding together. We have said he's immobile. That's factual. But to be fair to this man, he's had some. He is a marvelous thrower, and he has had some key passes dropped tonight. Well, he, he maintained a concentration there. I think, Howard, that uh, it's easy to say that veterans have it more than than the younger players, but that's really true. He maintained his composure, moved out of the pocket, and still found his receiver. Third down, long three for Denver. Ball at the 31-yard line. forward you saw it number 41 and just that as was I'm... one movement that hurts yeah just as I'm talking about composure that was obviously a different defensive alignment than what they were looking for Craig was trying to check off go to an audible for whatever reason it really didn't carry through the rest of the team called some movement in that line clock almost ran out ran out on him and they were called for a motion penalty. Third down eight. Ball now at the 36 yard line. 28 to seven. The Steelers over the Broncos. Denver has the football. They got the first turnover of the game. They have not been able to capitalize. Nine 
Steelers on the line of scrimmage. Morton reads it. Has a man open. Oh, Overthrows Haven Moses. It could have been six. Oh, he knows it. And he had him wide open. You're right. They had a maximum blitz, Frank. But he had it pegged. He threw. And his own chagrin you just saw on the screen. Tough call now. Fourth down, eight. A lot of yakking over there in the sidelines in front of the Denver bench. Do we punt it? Do we go for the field goal or do we go on fourth down? You're down 28 to 7, and they're going to go on fourth down. Well, Riley Odom's back in the game. The wide receivers will be Upchurch, 80. Haven Moses, 25. Odom's, 88. And they have to put it in the air. Steelers fired up. That's Jack Valentine, a rookie out of Eastern Colorado, and Jack Ham, number 59. And Morton is sacked all the way back midfield. That was fourth down. The Steelers will have good field position, and we'll be back in just a moment. We turned the lights on on these 40 American cars. Two and a half hours later, they all started. The Die Hard. It batted a thousand in Yankee Stadium. Only at Sears. From the people who brought you diehard batteries comes the muzzler. The aluminized muffler from Sears. Muzzler. The muzzler. Only $17.99. At Sears. Stanley makes saws to cut any job down to size. Cross-cut saws to cut across the grain. Rip saws to cut along the grain. Compass saws for odd shapes. Coping saws for curves. For precision cuts, back saws. For metal, back saws. Stanley saws are made with tough, tempered steel and selected hardwoods. Then packed in a protective sleeve packed with information. Stanley, we want to help you do things right. Buy any of these specially tagged saws and get up to a $1.50 rebate from Stanley. Sunday. No one knew why. No one could stop it. Disaster on the coastliner. On fourth and eight. Denver down 28 to 7. Went for it. Down with Greg Morton. The Steelers have the football. They mark it at the 42 yard line. Thornton 38. Franco Harris 32. Setbacks for the Steelers. This is Franco Harris. Threading his way through the traffic out to the 48 yard line. Gain of six, it'll be second and four. And right now we'd like to welcome KJCT in Grand Junction, Colorado, who became an ABC affiliate today. Welcome aboard, guys. Love your country. Big Joe. Big Joe Green. <laughs> nice. But really not what he was as a pass rusher when he was the first player ever drafted by Noel, but still strong. He's had a sack tonight. Terrific against the run. He's still a heck of a nice guy. And a football player. Second and four. Bradshaw switches it off. Reads the blitz. Hey, that's Screen great. to Thornton. First down. Inside the 45. He was down. Good play by Gratishar. Man, he had a lot of help over there. Gratishar worked his way through that offensive blocking. That was a well-executed play. Really kind of a tricky one. Let's see if we can pick it up. It's going to go to Thornton. Would that be an audible dawn, a screen? No, I don't think so, Frank. I don't know, but it's it, look at that. Look at Gratishaw play off a good block in the middle. That was Mike Webster, good blocker. He slipped in there only stopped. That would have been a lot bigger game. It was. That's they right. Picked up That's the, first the down. point. You're exactly right, Dan DeRue, because Evans played off that. But you're exactly right. That saved a huge game. Now the 44, first down Steelers. Bradshaw, screen to Stallworth. Inside the 35, Charlie West was groping for Stallworth's head. The crowd did not like it, and Stallworth didn't like it. I want to tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. When these Steelers put it all together, you look at a truly great football team, and you think of the team with the best record in the league, with great personnel, brilliantly coached, the Dallas Cowboys, 7-1. and one. And you can't help but think forward to the Super Bowl and expect that these two teams will meet again. If it does happen, and anything can happen between now and then, what a showdown that'll be. Two great teams. They're going to play next Sunday, as a matter of fact. Right here. Right that's here. Right. And that's going to be a good one. On second and short, Harris gets the first down, gets close to the 30-yard line. Interesting thing about these two teams, Pittsburgh is totally homegrown. They have not 
but a player in the roster has played somewhere else. They either drafted them or they're free agents. Dallas has a couple. Preston Pearson came from the Steelers, oddly enough, and Septian, of course, had played with the Rams. And the big Home one, the most recent, is John Dutton, who may be ready for this Pittsburgh Steeler grit That's next right. week. They have not activated him yet. Big defensive end they got from Baltimore. And in the stands tonight, and here to visit with us, Gil Brandt, the brilliant director of player personnel of the Cowboys. First and ten Steelers. Stallworth in motion. Bounce one. A couple of receivers open. Grossman for one. Franco Harris totally alone down the sidelines. Of course, Terry was looking for Swan. Sounds really weird, Frank, but you know, you can have almost, you can, say you can have too many guys open sometimes. It confuses you. He went out trying to throw it to Swan. Did that happen to you, Weber? Oh, yeah, a couple of times in practice. <laughs> How about in practice? about that game one time, Don? You hung it up in the middle, and I remember <laughs> asked, after the game, I asked you, I said, Don, there was no one near it. That's true. And I just flat forgot the play. That, I called in the huddle. That's really true. That, that's really true. Well, it could happen. Second and ten. Thornton. Thornton to the 25-yard line. A gain of five. It'll be third and five. A little bit of caution now in Pittsburgh. You notice, Don? Yeah, but I also noticed that they just picked up five yards right down the middle, but and uh, they, they went and they passed on that first down situation, and uh, they did have a couple of guys open. I think what they're doing now is they're saying, look, we don't really have to take that many chances. They fumbled once. They had a, a bad game a week ago. I think they're saying, look, let's go back. Really, Lynn Swan said in the open, let's go back to the things we do what we do best. Norris Weiss nursing a very sore knee, not in action tonight. On third and five, Bradshaw. Franco Harris. That Down time. goes Harris. Defensively, Gratishar. Oh, he was right in there. He was ready for it. Read it perfectly. Will isolate. Dan DeRue will explain. Well, he's a, really the defensive leader over 60. Number one hits, they call him, but he's there. You'll see him trying to get some moves out there. This Gary Mullins trying to block him. Gratishar plays off Mullins, comes in and gets Franco for a loss. You see that big bandage he has on his hand. He had finger surgery a couple of weeks ago. There it is. And he didn't practice for a week and said it was the best thing that ever happened to him. You can imagine that. He's also had a very sore toe. But he got a week off and he has been playing superb football ever since. Fourth down. Steelers will go with it. They have a 28 to 7 lead. Fire it for Smith incomplete. Well, the flag is down. And a passer. Roughing the passer. Oh, 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 what a tough penalty at this point in time. I saw a roughing the passer penalty cost New England a shot at the Super Bowl in a big game against Oakland. A still controversial call. I guess it was three years back. Top of your screen, you'll see it. Here comes the crisscrossing. And that's Barney Chavis who unloaded on Bradshaw. They're looking out after the quarterbacks this year. It's always a controversial call. Boy, it is because you're talking about split seconds. You're not talking about anything really big. You got 250 pounds in motion here. It was really a difficult call to make. It's moving and trying to get to the quarterback. In any event, the first down is inside the 15 yard line of the Broncos. Franco Harris finds an opening down at the 10 yard line, a gain of three. Be second down seven. We're inside eight minutes remaining in the third quarter. Terry Bradshaw having a good night. And by the way, a colleague of ours has written a book on Terry Bradshaw. What's it called? Man, Man of Steel. Steel. Dave Diles. It's good work. It is a good book. I've read it. Terry, 13 of 18, 222 yards tonight. Second and seven. All the time in the world, he throws it right into the arms of a Denver defender. Intercepted by Bob Swenson. <laughs> Touchback, and it'll come out to the 20-yard line. Denver will have the football. We'll be returning to Three Rivers Stadium in a moment. Westinghouse developed its ultrasonic flow meters to protect America 
By using sound to measure water flow, it predicted proper firing conditions for underwater missiles. Now, ultrasonic flow meters protect the delicate environment of the tundra by detecting possible breaks or leaks in the Trans-Alaska Pipeline. By innovation, a technology developed to protect America is helping protect America's environment. Westinghouse, a powerful part of your life. Introducing the 1980 front-wheel drive, Datsun 310. Only front-wheel drive with fully independent suspension. And optional skyroof. And remote-controlled rear windows. And rack and pinion steering. And 31 miles per gallon. The new 310 front-wheel drive with Datsun quality behind it. Datsun, we are to build America's most valuable cars. There's United, and we'll be in Oakland for that one, and it'll be fun to be with the San Diego Chargers. They have really come together. They're our powerhouse. Two of my favorite quarterbacks next Thursday, Danny Fouts and Old Snake. First and ten, Denver, following the Bob Swinson interception in the end zone. And the flag is down. You saw the movement over the left side. Otis Armstrong. The rusher for Denver. By the way, Franco Harris has his recorded his 32nd career 100-yard night. Here comes the call. And the first time ever he has had a 100-yard game against the Denver Broncos. Not only is Gil Brandt here tonight scouting Pittsburgh for Sunday's game against Dallas. We have offsides. Number 68, defense. L.C. Greenwood. Okay, that was the call. There's the posting of the Franco Harris achievement. But the great Tom Landry and his whole coaching staff are watching tonight. They know what they're saying. A great football team. I think First they... and five. Look out. Rick Upchurch. Off his fingertips. Mel Blunt defensively for the Steelers was there. Rick Upchurch is having far and away his best year ever as a receiver, probably because. Jack Dolvin, who alternates generally with him, is on the injured reserve with a sore knee. And Upchurch came into tonight with 29 receptions, and that's where he is. He's not caught a football tonight. Which is part of the job Pittsburgh's doing. But this man is a game breaker. Make no mistake about it. And don't think Dallas doesn't know it. Dallas 7 1. They're a little ahead of their schedule this year. Second and five, Otis Armstrong in motion. Riley Odom has the first down out around the 32-yard line. I think I'd use Riley a little bit more. Uh, they seem to be doubling those outside guys, whether it's Haven Moses or Rick Upchurch. A couple of times he's had some success with Riley down the middle, a couple of times on a quick checkoff to the outside. Make him cover that guy. Maybe they'll break that double coverage. They don't keep going to it. You saw his career receptions. Last year was his biggest year ever with the Broncos, and he's in his eighth now. He had 54 receptions last year. And another Pro Bowl year for Riley. First and 10 from the 32 yard line of Denver. Here's Otis Armstrong. Armstrong caught from behind, gets close to the 35. Steve Furness over there defensively for the Steelers. There he is, the big man, Franco Harris. When I mentioned don't think Dallas doesn't know what I was paying tribute to the Dallas talking about up church at that point. This man having a great night, over 100 yards, 32nd time. Dallas knows every player in the NFL. Their organization is great. Well, I think most of the folks know who plays in the league, but they know who plays better than most. That's right. Second down, eight. Ball up to 35. And again, a Steeler pops off sides. And again, it's Furness. Yep. And they Craig had a free one and could not connect. Had a mix-up. Haven did a turn in. Frank threw a fly. I mean, uh, Greg threw a fly around. Furness, as I mentioned earlier in the contest, you saw the signal. Over eager. No question about it. Out injured. Wanting to come back. One of the fiercest pass rushes from a small college in Rhode Island in football. Gary Dunn beat him out. And he wants to get back in there on a regular and sole basis. 
Thus, you see him responsible for two penalties tonight. Chuck Noll, I know, is happy that they all are getting healthy. Steve Furness, Elsie Greenwood missed some games at the beginning of the year, four. Second down, two. Ball right at the 40-yard line. John Keyworth finds an opening, gets the first down at midfield. The Black Pittsburgh didn't like that. They all jumped on him. Keyworth's a deceptive athlete. In college, played many positions. We've talked about it many times before. Linebacker, tight end, running back, can play most anywhere. Quarterback for one quarter. That's true. I know. Drafted by Washington and wouldn't go. You have a remarkable knowledge of that. It's actually, it's my mind is what's so really outstanding. Keyworth is out. Jim Jensen is in. First and ten, Denver, midfield. Haven Moses in motion. Screen to Moses. That's kind of an interesting little play. I like that. Moses gets inside the 35, a gain of six. Hit there by Jack Lambert out in front of a Dave Stuttered. First year man out of Texas at left tackle for Denver. Got a little block for Moses. Moved inside the 45. It'll be second down and four. That was a nice individual effort. We're in the third quarter, and it's the Steelers 28, the Broncos 7. Explosive first half. For whatever reason, they've been able to close out up church pretty well tonight. Well, they had him over in front of Mel Blunt for one. Might be part of it. Riley Odoms. I'd and throw to him till the cows come home, Frank. First down at the 31-yard line for the Denver Broncos, and we're going to pause five seconds and allow our stations to identify themselves. You're watching WTAE-TV Channel 4 in Pittsburgh, the city of champions. Back at Three Rivers Stadium, 28-7. to It was an explosive first half, first quarter, that is. Steelers getting on the scoreboard first. Denver answering right away. A swan touchdown from Bradshaw was a Steelers score. Haven Moses went 64 yards. Then it was all the Steelers in the second quarter. Frank O'Hara is getting a couple of touchdowns. Thornton another one. And Jack Ham, the all-pro linebacker for the Steelers, is having his knee investigated on the sidelines. He was there taking Riley Odoms out of bounds. He came into this game hurt. I'd like to say a word about Riley Odoms as we look at the tackle from the end zone, Don. Okay. The year he was drafted first by Denver, I had the personal belief he was the best athlete drafted that year. And I think he's proved out. He's a remarkable football player. Great strength, good speed, excellent strides, and marvelous hands, and good block. You have to think and hope that from that replay that Jack Ham maybe just bruised that knee. It did not appear to be twisted. He came into the game troubled with a groin pull. He's been troubled with that groin for some time this year. Frank, I think he got kicked in the calf. I see him massaging that calf. Let's hope it's the calf muscle and not the knee. That's what they're doing. The right first there. down at the 31 yard line of the Steelers. Denver's possession. They need a big one. No. Going deep for Moses. Oh. Picked oh. off. Donnie Shell, who's oh. been deeply criticized for the past few weeks. He's been playing hurt, and he's been criticized by the Steelers fans. He's been all over the field tonight. He comes up with the interception. I tell you, they can criticize him all they want. I think that young man is one of the best. He hits like a linebacker, a tremendous hitter. Marvelous position player, great hands, and there you see what he is. And we'll be back at Three Rivers Stadium in a moment. It took explorers three years to circumnavigate the globe. Even the great iron horse took weeks to cross the continent. Yet today, people move all over the world with the freedom of the wind. One morning on this continent, that evening on another. Boeing jetliners. They've done more to jet the world together than anything ever made by man. The world feels a whole lot better when the people of the world all get together. The world feels a whole lot better when we all get together. Look! It isn't such a big world. See! All the places and the faces. Feel! All the loving and the laughter. Bring us together. And you'll see the world feels a whole lot better. Next time you take off in this small world, remember to fly Boeing, the world's favorite way to fly. The world feels a whole lot better when we all get together. 
Gifford along with Howard Cosell, Don Meredith at a sold out night in Three Rivers Stadium. The Pittsburgh Steelers over the Denver Broncos 28 to 7. Donnie Shell interception for the Steelers in the end zone touchback. Steelers have the ball first and 10 their own 20. Franco Harris tacks on more yardage. Oh boy. <laughs> a big man out over the 35 for a Steeler first down. Flag down. And a flag is down. Back near the line of scrimmage. Holding and you know against whom. No, that's not out of Sistra. Mel Blunt, I know Mel him. Blunt. Yeah. Number 47. That's me. If he isn't the best, <laughs> hello to everybody. If he isn't the best, he's right up there with him. I don't want to run a foul of that guy. I'll send Meredith. There. I'll handle him. <laughs> the left and right combination. What was that I heard? Echo in my ear. What do you say, little holding over there, Frank? Holding against the Steelers. We could not identify the call. Three wide receivers now for the Steelers. Swan is in there, Smith is in there, and Stallworth. There is a kind of contented look on Chuck Noll's face <laughs> for the first time in many weeks. He Ball. sees his team back. Ball at the 14 yard line. Little draw play for Franco Harris. He gets some of the back moving out close to the 24 yard line. John Grant defensively for the Denver Broncos. It was almost the identical play they ran before that penalty. So uh, Denver didn't have time to stop up the hole, so they hit it again. Hey, keep in mind, right, keep in mind what the Steelers are doing on the ground. They've been impressive in the air, but the Denver Broncos are the number one team in the league against the rush. That is amazing. And that man doesn't play. I really respect that coach, Red Miller. He gets everything out of his personnel that they've got to get. Franco got it back to the. 23 yard line on second and seven. Bradshaw will put it up over the middle. Thornton has the first down at the 33. Hey, that's nice. That's nice. Get a, get a hold of the penalty. You say, well, maybe we won't make a first down. Two big plays. They come right back and pick it up. Nothing really fancy, uh, Frank, but I think in Terry's position, no, you really can't see Thornton. He just really came out of a little setback right over the middle, did a hookup. There he is, right between the linebackers. First down just walked into this booth looks like a Stanford University philosophy professor. You gotta be kidding. His name Ken Tickle. Throws a baseball like Tittle threw a football. <laughs> better. Better. Why yeah, you know what I mean. Quick toss. Franco Harris on the first down. Uh oh. Harris turns back inside but he's nailed there moving up quickly. Number 20 Louis Wright. Franco says wait a minute. Where'd you come from. What happened to that. This thing's not supposed to go that way. Louis Wright is good, Frank. You know, you, to play that corner, we've said so many times, I think it really is. Well, I think it may be the toughest position. I won't say one of them. I think it's the toughest position to play well. Because you get left out there all alone so many times. Well, he had that good training up in Bakersfield in high school, Don, <laughs> before he we went over to San Jose. I, I knew there was something. Second down and nine. <laughs> Screen, it goes to Smith. A big battle out near the 40-yard line, short of the first down at the 39. Bob Swinson up there defensively, and we've just been advised that Jack Ham's problem is a leg cramp, and that is good news. Here's Smith. He did an admirable job filling in for Lynn Swan for the past couple of weeks. Five catches against Cincinnati. Three tonight. Third down, long three. Ball inside the 40. They must get to the 43. Stalwart. Smith, both flank, top of your screen. And oh. Thornton makes a spectacular catch out over the 45 for a Steeler first down at the 46. Hey, he really did. That was really good one. Low and away, and he picked it up. Uh, we saw him in the first game of the season with a 21 yard touchdown catch against New England. Here he makes a diving reception of a Bradshaw pass, gets the first down. Big man can run, block, and receive none. He ought to play football. Sidney Thornton out of northern, northwestern Louisiana. Ball at the just over the 46-yard line. Bradshaw really mixing it up, hitting everyone on the field tonight. All right, 
Terry, be careful. Terry be careful. Down the sideline, wisely stepping out of bounds. Pick up a three. It'll be second and seven. Let's join Howard. Recognize this man at age 15, growing up in Cincinnati. They called him the Whip, the image of Ewell Blackwell, Kent to Colby, one of the heroes of the Bucks in the World Series. And I think you proved yourself in every way when in the fourth game, Lowenstein and Crowley racked you up and you came back better than ever. Wasn't that your test? Well, I'll tell you, Howard, it was a matter of, you know, in the fourth game, I made some mistakes and uh, you can't afford to make mistakes against good hitters. In the sixth game and the seventh game, I faced the same guys, basically, and I got right back in there. I threw the ball where I wanted to and made my pitches, and things worked out a lot better the way they usually do. I want to thank you for coming by. We're going back to the play action. Frank will take over. My congratulations. Thank you very much, Howard. And ours also on second down and seven. Handoff. Frank O'Harris gets away from Evans. Straight arming Evans. Moving down to the 43-yard line. Gets another Steeler first down. That was smart running, Frank. You know, there's times when Franco uses his power and his strength to turn up field to get the extra yard. He saw that time he was going for the first down, and he goes out of bounds. That didn't make him a bad guy. He picks up his first down and saves some of those bumps and bruises. And, Howard, I want, I want to call his hat, too. Where do these guys get these Cowboys hats? I don't know, I but if, if they put to Colby in now for Bradshaw, it wouldn't hurt a thing. Yes, it off would. He'd be throwing a sidearm off on the side over there. What's wrong with that? If you hit... You got those defensive linemen up there in front of you. We saw Franco Harris breathing deeply. It's been a very warm day here, as it has been over most of the East. And here comes the reverse. Oh, I love it. This Razzle, is Jim Smith. Razzle. And Smith has another Steeler first down. They're pulling all the pages out of the book tonight. I've got to have a slow-mo of Bradshaw going to block. Let's hear it for the quarterbacks. Well, he's laughing Look at about him. it. Oh, Razzle. he loves it. Huh? How about that? All right, here we go. A little razzle tazzle, you know, quarterbacks. Now, once you see that, now is that powerful? That's a powerful lead block. Well, Jim, you, you know, no, anybody could run behind that kind of block. That's right. It's a one sided game, but it's great to see a team put it all together, a team this great. They are really a superb football team. Hey, what they're doing right now is showing the people down the line they beat Dallas next weekend, then they have Washington, then Kansas City. San Diego and Cleveland, tough schedule. That's the end of the third quarter. Pittsburgh 28, Denver 7 will return for the fourth quarter in just a moment. Wednesday on Charlie's Angels, Farah's back, but on the wrong side of the law. It's poison, Jill. It's going to ruin your life. Well, it's my life. When she falls for the world's greatest thief, then a pretty girl's got something hot, and the most powerful men in Vegas will kill for it. Wednesday. This ship is longer than the largest ocean liner. It's U.S. Steel's new ore carrier, the Edwin H. God. It transports iron ore to our steel making plants on the Great Lakes. Our facilities require huge amounts of ore, and this ship will carry three million tons a year. This is a major investment, but we think of it as a thousand foot vote of confidence in our future. Confidence that United States Steel is one of our strengths. There's a beer that's going round All the hottest spots in town Everybody calls it I see light It's really getting through To the ones who like a lighter brew They're calling for I see light It's the taste that says today That's why your friends all say Hey, give me an I see light Hey, give me an I see light An I see light Israel's Foreign Minister Moshe Dayan has resigned. And Coroner Cyril Wecht has filed a $7 million lawsuit against Jack Lynch. We'll have details tonight following the Steelers and Broncos on Monday Night Football. Terry Bradshaw with a very hot hand tonight. He's getting a lot of support on the ground from Franco Harris and Sidney Thornton. But he's mixed it up. He's hit just about every eligible receiver on the field. Swan got the scoring started. 11-yard touchdown pass. He's hit Smith. He's hit Grossman. He's hit Harris. Stallworth on first and ten. Complete oh, to Smith. That's pretty. 
You remember, the, you remember the days when we used to talk about this Pittsburgh defense all the time and That's nobody right. there well, we say well now Brad you saw. talk about that offense. Did you see the way Smith came back for that ball. It's in, almost impossible to stop. It is and that's the old Sid Gilman theory of offense as you look at it here. You go out in the 13 to 17 yard area maybe maybe 12 to 16 you come back and there's no way you can stop. I just didn't realize that was Sid's idea. Not all it sure was. Well, Second down and six. You show me a better one. Bradshaw with a perfect bootleg. No he messed up Frank. That was a yeah, missed Louis right. Did he miss it? I, I thought he just held it. Well, let's take a look. I don't know. You may be right, but it looked to me they missed the handoff, and the next best thing to do after you do it, let's see what happens. <laughs> oh, he, that, that was a thing. bootleg. Oh, all the way. No, it was a bootleg. Well, then why didn't he have somebody out there blocking for him? That's a dumb call. If you're going to do all that without somebody out there to help you, he, short of the first down, you've I'm suddenly, you've suddenly grown melanin. <laughs> I've grown <laughs> what? Melanin. No, I have not. Yes, you have. Right. <laughs> Look at those in favor of Pittsburgh. Total yards, 406 to 228. And look at the time of possession. About 10 seconds difference. Ten. Always a compelling stat. Denver. 10 seconds. It was giving, 10 minutes. I'm sorry. Denver giving up less than 90 yards rushing per game. They've given up over 160. Thornton has the first down. 163. 163. That's Kent to Colby's weight. No, he's 160. He started the season at 165. Thornton is I think does add another dimension I was talking about it earlier the thing that Rocky Blyer I believe you know gave and he still does is that consistency you could always count on Rocky Blyer he's not going to make a lot of mistakes the 70 yard run he had against Cleveland was his career high but Thornton is a little he's got a different kind of look he can really do some blocks he is a good receiver maybe a better overall block, uh, back than uh, Blyer. Rocky. Yeah. first and ten at the 17. Thornton's in the end zone. And he oh! That's one of the dimensions. He did it against New England also. Just what Dunn was talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, you are seeing the Pittsburgh Steelers tonight as they can play. They're a great, great football team. And Terry laid that one again oh. right in there. That was pretty. He did everything but catch it for Thornton. And I still say you don't call a bootleg with no blockers. Don't be bitter. Look at that ball. Not even a ripple. Man, a life where you're going to play. Oh. oh, that's pretty. Craig Martin couldn't throw it better. Oh, that's nice. Matt Barr for the conversion. And the Steelers begin to roll it up. 35 to 7. We're in the fourth quarter. We'll be returning to Three River Stadium in a moment. You can own number one. The Datsun 280ZX is the most popular sports car in the world. Winningest car in its class. You will inject a 2.8 liter engine, four wheel disc brakes, full track certified instrumentation. All for thousands less than its reputation. Take number one off the track and you're driving number one on the road. The 280ZX. Test price it today. To give you the best for less. A Super Bowl Steeler is tough to beat. But against the Steeler, I can't compete. When a Steeler gets hit, it's got the guts to bounce back. <laughs> you turkey. Uniroyal presents the Steeler Radial. It's built tough with two steel belts, and it's tough to beat when you look at its price. To get to this year's Super Bowl, I'll just surround myself with four tough Steelers. The Uniroyal Steeler. You want a tough tire at a price that's fair? You want Uniroyal there. 1230 uh, in the East. Uh, some of you will be watching the American International game at Springfield at the Springfield, Massachusetts area. Then in the mountain areas, viewers will be seeing it as their second game, Utah State at Arizona State. And some of you will see in the East also Eastern Kentucky at Murray State. Okay. And a couple of you won't even be watching. <laughs> I believe you. Chris Payne returning the kick by Matt Barr. Uh, Rick Moser hustling down there to make the stop. That's an appropriate sign. It yeah. really is. Let me tell you something, folks. You're watching a team coming back to itself against a truly great defense. You can't find many, if any, defenses better in the NFL. High guy, Sidney Thunder Thornton. That's right. Than the Denver Broncos have. And Denver. 
Labour fans shouldn't be destroyed by this because they're up against greatness tonight. Morton, Morton remains the quarterback on first and ten. Fires it off to Rob Lytle, and Lytle gets to the 30, gain of five before he's dropped by Jack Ham, and it's good to see 59 back out there. It'll be second down and five. It's like Meredith batting against a Colby. He kid wouldn't have a chance. I know those sidearm pitchers. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, one of the teams that Pittsburgh will be meeting, and they got a tough road to hoe coming up, will be Dallas next week. Yes, that is absolutely. You want to talk we'll about Dallas? Seeing a team on Thursday night against Oakland, San Diego, that might be moving up the rest of the Cowboys and the Steelers. On second and five, Morton unloads it, gets it out to Wiley Odoms. Wayne Woodruff is there defensively, and I believe it's going to be a Denver first down. You make a great point, Frank. I sometimes wonder what San Diego might have been, as great as they are this year, if Louis Kelcher hadn't been sidelined for the season. Put him with Fred Dean, Will Be Young, the others, and that's what you'll be seeing less Kelcher this Thursday night. And don't count out the Raiders because of the upset by the Jets. The first down at the 36-yard line of Denver. Martin with a bootleg. That's the difference. And in and out of the hands of Rob Lytle. Incomplete. I understand the difference, but I also recognize the difference. There's an opportunity to pick up that first down on the ground, and Craig's just not going to risk it. And who am I to sit up here and say he should? But it was the kind of situation where it was that. Now that was a called uh, bootleg. Looks like we're going to get a new quarterback maybe for Pittsburgh. Sure, they want to save Bradshaw. Who incidentally said before the game that he doesn't like to play at night. He doesn't see as well. <laughs> Who said that, Bradshaw? Terry. If we could see any better, there would be lights out a long time ago. Oh, he's had some night. Mike Cruzzi, the backup quarterback warming up. We don't know whether we'll see him or not. Craig Morton stays on, looks over a second down and 10 from his own 36-yard line. Right in the middle. As there the time go. complete to Haven Moses, first down at the 46-yard line of the Steelers. Now, really, truly, you're not going to find a quarterback that can throw a better ball than that ball that he threw right That's there. That's true. When Otto Graham was coaching the Redskins, as you look at Moses isolated in just a second, when Otto Graham was coaching the Redskins, it was the year of Joe Namath coming up from Alabama. It was the year of Bill Munson coming up from Utah State. And Otto Graham said the purest passer is Craig Moore. On first and ten, Craig will put it in the air again. Church is open. And he caught his first pass and of the night. Gets the ball at the 21 yard line, first down in Denver. Defensively, it was J.T. Thomas. Thomas, who has been going all the way tonight in the place of Mike Wagner. Again, nothing not that fancy except you see Mel Blunt leave him and stay in the short zone, so they're not going to double him. He goes into the inside, comes back. Greg throws the ball out there in pretty good shape. That was J.T. Thomas who came over and made it tough. Thomas basically a cornerback, but he has worked some in preseason after missing an entire season with a blood disorder at the safety spot. Maybe a little rusty back there. On first down, here comes Larry Canada. Uh, Canada at nailed Donnie. by Donnie Shell. Donnie Shell, the guy who hits like a linebacker. Frank, did you notice this is the most points scored against this great Denver defense as you look at Shell since 1976 when the Pats got 38 against them. And that's not over. Good point. Oh, no, don't be dismal. <laughs> Good point. No, they are just moving. Everything's clicking really well. Calvin Clark comes in at left tackle, the number one draft pick. Nebraska for Denver. He wears number 73. Craig looks over a second down and a long eight. The ball just inside the 20. Look for Riley Odoms and uh, Riley's not even out on the pattern. Rob Lytle taken by Jack Ham or rather Dennis Winston. Old Dirt. Dirt's out there. That's what they thought Denver would be doing all night getting it back out of the backfield against Winston who basically is a middle linebacker. That's what I thought too. They've got around to it here in the fourth quarter. Third and about a yard. The ball 
inside the 12. I don't fall 10 but night. They were against a great machine. What do you think is going to happen then next week when the uh, Dallas Cowboy group comes to town? Well, I'll answer that question in a moment because my producer Dennis Lewin has just told me he is pushy, we're, isn't he? We're about to break for a commercial. Pushy, pushy, pushy. Gentlemen, gentlemen, tonight we're brought together here by two things we all love: good food and light beer from Miller. I want to take hey, this Ronnie, opportunity myself to tell you. I tell you, I don't get no respect. Garçon, je dis seigneur. Seigneur, seigneur. Sounds good. What is it? Meat sandwich and a light. Hey. Gentlemen, as we all know and appreciate, light has one third less calories than a regular beer, and it's less filling. But the best thing is, it tastes great. Less filling. This is by your brother. This is my brother. This is my peers. What's wrong with you guys? Hey, Bubba, you want the peas? Ooh. Hey, you gonna eat all that? Just showing off. Gentlemen, in closing, I'd like to think I speak for all of us, but I say if it wasn't for light, I wouldn't be where I am today. Hey, you poor Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer. And less. Three Rivers Stadium. The Denver Broncos have a third and short yardage. The ball inside the 12. They have to get to the 11. To bring in their short yardage offense, two tight ends, Odoms and Egloff, Keyworth and Armstrong in the setbacks. Broncos down 35 to 7. Play action by Craig Morton. Look out. Hangs it up in the air, did not fool the Steelers. It'll be fourth down and short. Fourth down and short. Is there something you were going to tell me, Howard? Oh, your question. Yeah. Pittsburgh and Dallas. Next week. Next here, here at Three Rivers Stadium. Well, I think maybe Dallas, after this game, will win that game, but I don't think it's relevant when they meet, if they do, in the Super Bowl. Because I honestly believe, and I can only tell it like I think it is, that the Pittsburgh Steelers are the greatest team in football. All right, fourth and a little bit. Top gets the first down. Whenever you're in doubt, go to your power runner. If they're the greatest team, then why is Dallas going to beat them next week? Because I think this is a big game, an up game for Pittsburgh. After I think game it's a last game last week. Yes, yeah. I think it's a game they wanted to reestablish themselves. I think it'll be a very tough game, very close game. I think Dallas is a super organization, brilliantly coached. Super Bowl, I think this team has the greatest people in football. I think Mr. Landry, nobody respects Pittsburgh than Tom. More, more than Tom. Martin gets the first down inside the 11. 9.44 remaining in the game. Down goes Martin. Fumble. Fumbles the football. The Steelers have it. Dennis Winston there first from his outside linebacker position. Turn out to lights. The party is over. Yes, it is over. I think what I really mean is it's impossible as you look at this again for human beings to be this much up every week. And they're tough tonight. They really are tough tonight. That was Jack Ham on the recovery. We wanted to hold off. We could, uh, when you see him in the area, he usually has the football. Who was it that knocked it out? Right? Dennis Winston. Winston knocked it out. First and ten, the Steelers are with the football at the 21. Rocky Blyer. Gets the call and Blyer out over the 25 to the 26. A gain of six and we second and four. And Mike. Kruzik is the quarterback now for the Steelers. Good Lord, Bob Euchre's back. <laughs> Halloween it comes early to Pittsburgh. <laughs> Kruzik, three of eight this season in relief for Bradshaw. Has never thrown a regular season touchdown. Started six games when he was a rookie some four years ago. He won every one of them. Did not put the ball in the air that much. 
running back is number 27, Greg Hawthorne, a rookie out of Baylor, number one draft pick, and that's Hawthorne. I'm glad you folks got a chance to see Greg Hawthorne, the number one draft choice, as Frank said, out of Bell. This is a terrific run. He saw a lot of service early on until everybody got well again. But he's more than just a great runner. He is a superb lead blocker, and he has good hands done, can catch the football coming out of the backfield. He's what you described in Thunder Thought. He weighs 225 pounds. He's six foot three. He was hurt in training camp, too. Up. A little movement over here by Grossman. Movement on the right side. Could it be that Randy Grossman reacted to a Bronco movement? Press release his own Thorn. I mean, uh, own Hawthorne with it. He really was having a little difficulty in adjusting to the system. He did get hurt early in training camp. Didn't get that early development that uh, the young players need. Encroachment number 84. Call against Grossman. The injury he had in training camp was not the injury that he suffered a year ago when he had a broken hip rim as a senior at Baylor. He did not play much of last season, but he had an incredible junior and sophomore year there. Did you see what Baylor did to Army, Frank? 55 nothing. And remember, Alabama was good enough to beat Baylor 45 nothing. And Jackie Sherrill, coach of Pitt, came in to see us tonight in the wake of his great victory over Washington. Five-yard assessment. Down remains the same. First and 15, the ball inside the 30. Rocky Blair, single setback. Cruzy. And this is Hawthorne. Told you he could catch done. And the rookie has a first down after the 47 yard line. Hit there by Joe Rizzo. I thought they might throw a flag and say, all right, who do you want to throw it to? There was nobody back there close to him. Got good protection. Hawthorne ran all the way across the field. Finally opened up late. And you're right. Cruzy can't throw that ball. I guess it's a pretty good time to point out what Coach Red Miller said. If I had Brad Shaw, I'd start him in every game. That's right. Krizik had a remarkable collegiate career for Boston College, by the way. My daughter will be graduating from there in January. Congratulations to Vicky. That's right. He set an NCAA record up there of 67.8% completions. And now he hands off to Rocky Blyer and Bach. It's about six to the 47. It'll be second and four. They have so many weapons. They give you the feeling they can do whatever they want to do. There are two super organizations in this league. You're looking at one of them. The Pittsburgh Steelers under Dan Rooney and Chuck Noll. And the other one, of course, the Dallas Cowboys under Tech Schramm and Gil Brandt, who's here tonight, and Tom Landry. I tell you, when those two teams meet up, you're seeing the best that football can possibly offer. Unless San Diego or New England intercedes. Well, there's always some exceptions to everything. Charlie West left the game earlier. Bernard Jackson left the game for Denver. Chris Payne is in. Handoff goes to Hawthorne. Hawthorne close to a first down. Otis Armstrong, a great, great football player who has not been himself since a whole series of injuries. And the forlorn look on his face kind of sums up tonight. Denver will be back. You know, if I were Denver, I think I could have kind of almost anticipated this. You don't want to come in and play Pittsburgh after they've had a game like they did last week against Cincinnati. That's right. So they caught them on one of their moves really up. And that's a nice thing. These guys are know they're a lot better than they were last week. And they're really proving it tonight. Third and about a foot for the Steelers. Grossman in motion. Flyer. Might be a fumble there by his jumping in there. Everyone was groping around. Denver says they have the football. And I and think they do. they do. Yes. And coming up with it is Bruce Bradford, a rookie from Grambling. What a nine. All right, Rocky, what happened? Let's see. He's got ups. He never did have possession of it, it seemed like. He dropped it right at the line, fell under somebody, and you've got it. And we have 6.29 remaining in the fourth quarter. And we're going to see Craig Penrose for the Denver Broncos when we return in just a moment. Penrose. Do you believe I forgot to change my antifreeze? <laughs> you know how embarrassing it is having your toe truck toe? You should have kept your guard up. <laughs> Get it, animal. 
ammo. Fat chance, Slim. Should have kept your guard up. Keep your guard up with Dowguard antifreeze. Dowguard protects against freeze-ups, boil-overs, rust, and corrosion all year round. Dowguard coolant antifreeze. Six. Bob it, I think Seven. you got him. Just remember, keep your guard up. Ready. Hey, hatchback, you got most valuable. That's you, 210. Datsun 210 hatchback. You call it most valuable. Hey, it ran for a big 31 miles per gallon. Tough city driving. Datsun 210, our number one gas mileage car. It's money in the bank, not in the tank. What's the secret of your success, Datsun? We are driven. Yes, we are driven to build America's most valuable cars. The 1980 Winter Olympics this February, exclusively on ABC. Can America's Jim Denny win the gold at home? A former NCAA passing champion is in the lineup at quarterback for the Denver Broncos, Craig Primrose. That will tell you that Norris Weiss obviously was not ready to play tonight, or he would have come in in relief for Morton. The Broncos had the football, the ball at their own 43-yard line. Primrose right to the air. Riley Odoms. And Penrose connects inside the 30-yard line of the 28, and Donnie Shell makes the stop. Great Penrose in 16 games that he has played in his career. A little over 46% passing, five touchdowns, 11 interceptions. And the way Shell made the stop, you had the feeling that he felt that'll never happen again. If I have to kill. Oh, no, he didn't mean that. Kind of a, go ahead. Zachary Dixon is in there now. Number 31, a rookie from Temple for Denver as a running back with John Keyworth. And this is Dixon. Dixon maybe ekes out a yard. Dwight White is in there now defensively for Pittsburgh. He's in on the stop. You mentioned Temple to me from which Dixon gravitated. Jackie Sherrill talked to me at halftime about Temple. He said they've got some football team and people don't realize. And I got heat because of the game they played against us. Look what they did to Syracuse. He's got a point. A moment ago, you saw Charlie West leave the field for the Denver defense. He apparently just shake it up. He should be able to return to the action. We've been informed. Second down and nine. Penrose gets the blitz. That's a good blow. Jack Ham, his fifth interception of the year. That is amazing. <laughs> now, what a Jack Lambert that is. I said Jack Ham, I meant Lambert. That's his fifth interception. Well, he was the only guy within a 20 yard area from where that ball was. Had a good rush, had a good blitz coming in from the safeties. You see, he's under a lot of pressure, trying to get rid of it. And man of life, that's right there in the middle. Big Jack got it. Still live from Kent State University, Jack Lambert. What a play. He really gets into a game, too. He does. Says put skirts on the quarterbacks. Even his own teammates stay away from him. On first and ten, Greg Hawthorne gets the call. Gets inside Denver territory at the 47. Gain of four, it'll be second down and six. We're inside five. We're down to 440. As you look at it there, thereabouts, and counting down. Eight of five. It was all Denver, rather all Pittsburgh from the very beginning. They exploded offensively after coming off that humiliating performance last week against Cincinnati, taking nothing away from Cincinnati, but when you turn the ball over nine times, you should win. Denver's touchdown should never have happened, as a matter of fact. 64-yard. Through. Haven Moses bounce off. Hawthorne gets to the 40. Another Pittsburgh first down. Hey, you folks, watch this 27. Hawthorne. We told you he could do it all. He's a great lead blocker, great hands, can catch the football. He's a great runner, and he is destined to be a long term star, barring injury in this league. It's like he's living right, right now. now. It was barring injury. injury. That's right. <laughs> It's nice to have guys with this kind of talent that sit on the bench and you can spend two or three years trying to figure out when they're going to get in the main action because you know he's got some talent. Hawthorne comes off. A rookie from Temple comes in. That's Tony Anderson once again. Anderson gets the call and 
It's close to the 35 yard line. On that one play, he showed you a little something. Then they yes, he did. Rick Moser is also in there offensively now. Former Scarsdale High School product. I knew you were going to say that. I knew that. Of course. That. Why not? They were Jeff or with Kyle. Who was well, he? Played? He played under Jeff a great Gifford. high school coach named Ron Bashir. All right. That's right. And Jeff Gifford, one of the great players in the history of Scarsdale High. Absolutely. Let's tell it like it is. Actually, Rick played with Kyle. They won their championship. Second and five. <laughs> well, oh, a little fisticuffs going on here. Forget it. Everybody was off balance on the play. Well, let's and just throw up a flag and fight for a while. With 2.36 left. Ted Peterson getting into it with John Grant. 2.35 left, Frank. A 35-7 score. for my conduct, offense and defense. <laughs> See that? Both were bad boys. Things can deteriorate. I've noticed that. What do you think, Mike? Piece of cake, isn't it? <laughs> hey, man, 35-7. I can do anything I want to. It looks all right. I'll tell you, it was three years ago when Bradshaw was hurt. Oh, there, this young man came in as a rookie. He started six games. They won all six of them. He did some job. Rocky Blyer comes in. Rick Moser comes out. So it's Tony Anderson, 33. Rocky Blyer, number 20. Setbacks for the Steelers. Third down and four. The ball up the 34-yard line. Theo Bell is also in, number 83, split to the left. And this is Anderson, the rookie from Temple, gets inside the 30, and he has another Steeler first down. Told you Temple had some team, and they have had good teams before. Anderson stopped by Addis Bar, Frank. Seconds ticking away towards the two-minute warning. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Well, the Steelers will increase their record to six and two. They'll have a full game lead over the Cleveland Browns and the Houston Oilers. They both have five and three records. We have two minutes remaining, and we'll be returning to three River Stadium in a moment. At the 1904 World's Fair, Harvey Firestone received a gold medal for his tire. But to Harvey, the real proof that he was building a good tire was people were buying it. Just about every car on the fairground was riding on Firestone. Today, the Firestone 721 is being proved the same way. American drivers have bought over 20 million 721s. You know, Harvey always said, give people a good product, and they'll buy it. Bruce Jenner for the Minolta XG1. The Minolta XG1 35 millimeter is so automatic, I can keep taking pictures while my friend Jeff kicks the ball from sunlight to shadow. The XG1 changes the exposure not just automatically, but continuously. Minolta's continuous automatic exposure system helps give you pictures you never thought you could take at a price you never thought you could afford. The Minolta XG1, the automatic choice in automatic cameras. Mike Cruzy out of Boston College is Earthen wrapping it up for Terry ball. Bradshaw. Bradshaw with a tremendous night. Cruzic now working against the clock. He's two for two, as you saw. And there is Terry on the sidelines. 18 of 24, 267 <laughs> yards, a touchdown. Can't and see just it, good generalship. Screen to Smith. And Smith is taken out of bounds. Stopping the clock with 155 remaining in the game after a pickup of four. I want to see Pittsburgh play Dallas when all the chips are down. What a game that'll be. They did. January, 35-31. Just a touch of offense, right, folks? You know, Terry Over had... 500 yards. Terry had 200 yards passing just a little after the first quarter. <laughs> and then they kind of eased off of it. I think he ended up about 265 or something like that. Not bad. Second and six, the ball just inside the 24-yard line of the Denver Broncos. Tony Anderson and the rookie from Texas. So first down, he really accelerated. Banging inside the 15, down to the 12. Where do they find these guys, Don? They well, that one they got from Temple, the other one they got from Baylor. But the thing I think to keep in mind, basically, is that if you're on defense and you're sitting there and it's 35 to 7, I don't care what kind of competitor you are, it's just a little hard to get it all put together. 
So I always kind of got upset when these young guys would come in, particularly those young quarterbacks, you know, after you just played your tail off all that, and everybody things seem to go real well. But uh, they're not going to win this ball game. Denver knows it. It's hard to keep it up. Answer to the question. Tony Anderson was a free agent for Temple. He gets the call again. <laughs> he runs with a little bit of an abandon, I'll tell you that. He sure does. And yeah. what, what Don said was very true. You've got to remember this. Uh, hey, Joe Green's doing an interview while the game's in progress. Yes, and then I wrote. Yes. <laughs> Those are not our cameras. It's not ABC. Because that could get 80 columns. <laughs> totally false. However, second down and eight. The ball inside the 10-yard line. Crowd wants the Steelers to score again. Seconds ticking away. 30 seconds remaining in the game. Oh, score. Oh, you got to spike it. Oh, boy. And they are beating a team of pride, a team with great self-respect, a team with one of the best defenses in the NFL. Look at this again. Boy, is there a hole up there? Charlie West, we mentioned, got hurt earlier. He was no, he got blocked out. That was just some kind of hole in the middle there. Hey, I like the way he runs. I do, too. They may be letting up a little bit on Denver's side, but he really opens it up with good speed. Matt Barr, once again, he's exhausted tonight. <laughs> to the uprights. Steelers, 42, the Broncos, 7. Tony Anderson had just ripped the number one defense in the NFL. Zenith announces the most amazing video recorder yet. The new video director with Speed Search. The special Speed Search picture moves at about 10 times normal speed. It lets you speed past what you don't want to see and lets you stop right at what you do want to see. You also get stop action, reverse, and lots of other new features, including five-hour recording time. The new video director, the most exciting video recorder yet from Zenith. In business, the more efficiently you use your time, the more money you make. Time is money. So if you're spending hours dictating letters to far off places, and hours are spent typing them, I've got other work to do. Kick the letter habit. Pick up your phone and give them a ring. The phone turns your time into money. There he is. There he is, the free agent out of Tipple. He's on the special teams. He'll be there for a while. Ray has looked impressive tonight. A man named Wayne Auden has to be enjoying this. Denver has their own Temple product as we look at Chris Payne. Denver has Zachary Dixon, 11th round draft pick running back. Frank, we're about to run out. There's something I'd like to say to the people at Denver. Yours is a fine football team. What has happened tonight can happen in football. Pittsburgh is a truly great football team when they put it all together. And you have seen that in action tonight. The man you're looking at, Red Miller, he's as good a coach as there is. He's a gritty, intelligent man, filled with character that he imparts to his team. But tonight, no chance. And now we can all go back to Denver. I'm sure glad you covered us there. <laughs> First and ten, the Broncos. They caught a hurricane tonight. Great Penrose. Lays it up. He's out of to Zachary Dixon. He is a rookie from Temple. One more time. Hey, Mom. Hey, Mom. Who's down there? And they yeah. bring it back. Hey, Frank, who's the executive producer of this game? As always, the executive producer of ABC Sports is Ren Arley. Okay. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football produced by Dennis Lewin, directed by Chet Forty, technical director Bill Morris, associate director Rob Biner, our technical manager, Coach Coltrane, our unit manager, Irma Norris. That reception by Dixon, out of bounds. Second down and 10. 13 seconds remaining in the game. Penrose. Penrose Lane. Life is pretty in Penrose Lane. They all had a shot at it. It was intended for Vince Kenny, incomplete. Five seconds remaining. This. Oh, Curly, I'm so sorry for you, buddy. Tomorrow is another day. He's been there. Yeah. He'll have another big day along the line. 
Yesterday's but a dream and tomorrow's only a vision. But today, well lived, makes every yesterday a dream of happiness and each tomorrow a vision of hope. Sing like going home, my darling. Who's All that? right. Willie Nelson? No, that's out of Leaves of Gold. Thought it might have been from the Times. Good event. Yeah, my time. <laughs> Third and ten. <laughs> that was good, Shake. This is Canada. We've always got that old flare back to go to. And that'll do it. Time has expired. Once again, the final score, Pittsburgh 42, Denver 7. Be sure to join us this Thursday for a special edition of ABC's NFL football. The San Diego Chargers against the Oakland Raiders from the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum in Oakland, California. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. More people fly United to Hawaii than any other airline. This has been a presentation of the leader, ABC Sports, bringing you exclusive coverage when the world comes to America this February for the 1980 Winter Olympics.